Good evening and welcome to tonight's public hearing, which promises to be a robust and wild ride for all of you. So the count I have, we have, a, we have a number of issues upon which people are testifying, and so I am uh, there. So far, when I left the front desk, the count was 68 people testifying. That could be unduplicated, but it could be duplicated, but it's still 68. So I am going to cut this back to two minutes so that the folks at the end of the line are not here for quite so long. And I, um, I'm sorry about that. I know many of you like really plan for your three minutes, but hopefully you have a little time while others are testifying to do some editing on your remarks and fit it into two minutes. So with that, uh, I have a very complicated <laughs> script to work my way through. So our first uh, public hearing is on the Skinner Butte height limitation. I am opening the public hearing on a proposed ordinance amending the city's land use code to create a half block transition area between the commercially zoned area south of 6th Avenue and the Skinner Butte height limitation area north of 6th Avenue. Those wishing to speak during this public hearing should have already submitted a completed request to speak form to the front information desk. Do any counselors need to disclose any bias, conflicts of in interest, ex parte communications, or abstentions pursuant to e EC 9.70653? One. Claire. OK. Um, would you like to disclose, please, sure. Councillor Serret? I was advised by uh, one of our attorneys that uh, I should disclose that I did have a meeting with um, Casey Barrett, I think is his last name. I apologize, Casey, and uh, Brian Obi to discuss the Obi project. And the height limitation was mentioned, but not discussed during that meeting. Um, but I wanted to uh, let folks know that that had happened, I believe, in early February was when that meeting took place. Everybody? Everybody? everybody. I thought everybody did. Yeah, everybody. We all did. Is no, I, I had a meeting, just me and the two of them. I did, too. Okay, well, I, I mentioned that to the attorney. Yeah, she job. suggested that I make this Very statement okay. right Very now. Good. If you all need to make <laughs> a similar statement, I'll leave that up to you. All right. Okay, uh, Councillor Clark, you also? What she said. Okay, what she said. Okay. Yeah, me too. Yeah. So, we all did. All of us. All of us. All of us. All of us, e everyone. Okay. They talked to us. We listened. They could come here and talk to us. Do you have something to reveal to I me? I wanted to make sure there was no requirement to have a follow-up regarding if it had any impact on your impartiality, but putting it on the record that you had the meeting, you're good to go. That's all, so we can proceed now. One more time. If you have it in the record that you had the contact, then we can proceed. Okay. Okay, and then you have given me text about, before we proceed, I want to state that anyone testifying has the right to address and rebut the substance of the ex parte communication just disclosed. Correct? Okay. All right. Have staff received any challenges to a counselor's impartiality submitted pursuant to Eugene Code Section 9.70655? No. Okay. Excellent. City Manager, I turn this over to you. Thank you, Mayor. Although you've outlined uh, uh, the public hearing pretty well, the one piece that I would say is uh, the building heights that you talked about would be allowed up to approximately 110 feet, which is between the 80 feet that's currently allowed and the 150 and 120 foot uh, allowed across the street. Okay, thank you. So I have, uh, oh, I see, this is out of order. So I have 13 speakers. The first one is Casey Barrett, followed by Sue Pritchard. Um, so, Mayor, if you could please read the testimony that needs oh. to be directed at. Oh, I'm sorry. I skipped a whole thing here. Right. Thank you. Let me read this. Testimony presented at this public hearing should be directed toward the applicable approval criteria or other criteria that the speaker believes applies to the decision. The applicable approval criteria for this proposed land use code amendment are from Eugene Code Section 9.8065, which states that a land use code amendment must be, one, consistent with the applicable statewide planning goals as adopted by the Land Conservation and Development Commission, two, consistent with applicable provisions of the comprehensive plan and applicable adopted refinement plans, and three, in the case of establishment of a special area zone, 
The proposed land use code amendment must be consistent with EC 9.3020 criteria for establishment of an S special area zone. The failure of anyone to raise an issue accompanied by statements or evidence sufficient to afford the City Council and parties an opportunity to respond will preclude appeal on that issue. The request to speak forms have been separated into three groups and speakers will be called in the following order. Those in support of the proposed land use code amendment, those with a neutral position, and those opposed to the proposed land use code amendment. Please give your name and address when you come to the podium to speak. You will have three minutes to comment. The timer and lights on the podium indicate the time you have to speak. A yellow light will come on when you have 15 seconds to complete your comments. The red light indicates the end of the three minutes. I will now open the public hearing with those in support of the proposed land use code amendment. Those in support. And I will begin with Casey Barrett. Dropbox. How do I know? Oh, I see. And just a quick correction, Mayor, based yeah, on your previous statement, what you had in your script, if that light will indicate three minutes, the light will indicate two minutes. Oh, sorry. Yes, two minutes. Two minutes. Well, thank you, Mayor, and thank you, uh, City Council, for the opportunity to speak in front of you this evening. My name is Casey Barrett. I live at 3401 Summit Sky Boulevard in Councillor Pryor's ward. Um, and we have talked to everyone about this project. Um, in our excitement, um, in our vision for the community, we've been trying to share that with as many people as possible to make sure we're heading down the right road and we're doing everything um, as right as possible. I'm here tonight to speak in support of the three proposals based on uh, or for the Fifth Street Public Market expansion. Um, and out of respect for your time, I'm only going to speak once tonight. It was going to be for three minutes, now I'm to two. Um, but so uh, I would like to ask everyone that's in attendance this evening that is uh, in support of the Fifth Street Public Market expansion to please stand and show your support for the project. Thank you very much. I, I wanted it to be recognized that there's also a lot of people here that are, are choosing to speak on latter issues that won't be speaking on these three topics, um, but it's something that's uh, widely supported in the community. As a side note, I also serve on the Eugene uh, Chamber Board, um, and I want to express my support for the smoke-free downtown as well as the uh, cannabis um, boundary uh, proposals in front of you this evening. Um, so really to jump right into it, uh, we have uh, three proposals in front of you tonight, the alley vacation and the height limitation, both which uh, with uh, without those we simply can't move forward as proposed. Um, city planning and staff has taken a, a very hard look at the height proposal and has come forward with a proposed zone um, and height based on their own analysis of the area. Um, that they And I believe that they have demonstrated that that does not obstruct views to the Butte. Uh, currently on the other side of Sixth Avenue, buildings can, can and are built to 150 feet, um, while on our site we're held to about 80 feet. The proposed change would allow us to go to 110, which is well below um, the allowable height across the street, which then in turn does not allow us to block the views of the Butte. And we frankly would not be coming forward with a proposal that we f uh, felt would impact downtown Eugene in a negative way like that. The other piece I want to touch on quickly is the sign uh, element. Element. So we are in the oldest portion of downtown Eugene. We are part of Eugene Skinner's original donation, which began Eugene City. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you. Thank you. Next is Sue Pritchard, followed by Sean Camblin. Hi, I'm Sue Pritchard. I live at 2671 Emerald Street. I'll be really brief about this particular one. I'm super excited about this project. I think this particular amendment is reasonable and appropriate and will benefit future development downtown. I want to take 30 seconds of my two minutes here to ask you please to each speak directly into your microphone. I'm probably not the only one here very severely hearing impaired. And the only reason the system works there is if you speak to your microphone. So if I could ask you that, I really appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Sean Camblin, followed by Stephanie Kimmel. Hi, my name is Sean Camblin. I'm a local small business owner. And I live at uh, 2560 Charlton. Uh, I support these proposals being discussed tonight to facilitate this Fifth Street market expansion. I think it makes common sense and good sense. It's great to see mixed-use investment in that area of town. Uh, I'm a realtor. I'm ex very excited to see additional housing as part of it. A uh, longtime supporter of state's land use policy. It's clear that as the population grows in this town, we're going to have to go up a little bit. Um, and that's it. I just The sign's great, too. I probably won't stick around for all three, but I'm in support of all the proposals needed. I think they're simple and common sense. Thank you. Thank you. Stephanie Kimmel, followed by Tim Campbell.
Good evening. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I signed up to support the amendment for the height restriction um, because that is really the critical uh, element to making this project viable. To be able to add that last story really makes it pencil out. And I would love to see this go forward. Um, I was on the downtown commission in the 80s, and we were a um, commission appointed by the council to explore ideas for revitalizing the city. And um, we, in the end, we made three recommendations. We recommended that the, the uh, historic district be defined and improved and promoted. We made a recommendation that the city connect with the river and we made a connection for uh, a recommendation for um, a public space plaza. So I think we're, we're starting to see some of these happen finally, and I would encourage you all to support um, this wonderful, exciting development in downtown Eugene. Thank you. Thank you. Tim Campbell, followed by Chris Boone. I'm Tim Campbell, owner of Campbell Commercial Real Estate. Uh, we manage and own eight different buildings downtown that uh, comprise of about 300,000 square feet. I reside at 3475 Gillum Road. Uh, I am for all of the measures tonight uh, for a smoke-free downtown for a thousand uh, foot buffer zone between uh, cannabis retail shops. And for the sign amendment, um, and for the height limitation, uh, the design of the new hotel and uh, how it looks is absolutely iconic and it's something that we need. And uh, not only will it, it benefit, our generation will benefit future generations and guests as well, uh, in, in town and out of town guests. Thank you. Thank you. Chris Boone, followed by Jenny Ullum. I'm Mayor of Venison Council. My name is Chris Boone and I'm a business owner of Boone Insurance Associates at 72A Centennial Loop in Jennifer Ye's Ward. Thank you for your time and commitment to our community and all the hours you may spend making our community better. I'm here this evening to speak on the consideration for the height limit code and why I support this as well as the alley vacation and the signed code amendment. Under the Envision Eugene UGB conclusion, it was determined that we will add approximately 34,000 new residents in the next 20 years. Part of the plan under this was to allow for 1,000 new high-density homes downtown. This can be accomplished with a reasonable change to the code to allow slightly higher building allowance for builders. Allowing for the height limitation to change <coughs> will also allow for better financial suitability as well for current and future projects downtown. In doing so, we'll also create a larger tax base for the city to provide services to the whole community. It will help reduce traffic by having better density, which aligns with Eugene's CEAP or climate plan and goals to reduce fossil fuels. But most importantly, now is the right time as well as for many of these decisions. I have grown up in this community and now raising my own family here. I have never felt so much energy and opportunity for growth and our ability to change our downtown and our community course for the next generation. We do not get these opportunities every day. And it is our job as a community and leaders to make decisions, even tough ones, that will leave our community better off than we found it. I would like to close with a quote and thank you for your time and consideration. Without continual growth and progress, such words as improvement, achievement, and success have no meaning. Benjamin Franklin, thank you. Thank you. Jenny Ullum, followed by Tom Stewart. Good evening, my name is Jenny Ullum and I live at 2114 University Street in Ward 3. I am here to uh, share part of the testimony submitted by Brad Stanglin, a respected landscape architect who happens to be my neighbor. And we were chatting over the back fence, he was waxing eloquent about the project, and I told him he should write it down and submit it. When he couldn't be here in person, I told him I would deliver it. So this begins Brad. As a landscape architect, I respect the role of design in creating successful buildings and developments that in turn create successful cities. Eugene is a single story structure city, but it can't stay that way. And our own goals suggest we don't want it to. If we don't want sprawl, we need to go up. It's obvious that the development is a vast improvement over what is there now. Let me address the sign. It may seem like a minor point, but to a designer it is anything but. It is the cherry on top that complements and completes a beautiful new building. It carries out the theme of the district and resonates with me and I think with others as well. In close proximity to the train station, the Gordon Hotel reminds us of earlier hotels that were in that neighborhood to serve people traveling by rail. 
Certainly the period appropriate roof time, rooftop sign has less mass and is, in my view, preferable to a building or wall mounted sign. Eugene loves its natural features, but we need to pay attention to our skyline too. And we need to be thinking uh, ahead 50 to 100 years. Having elegant buildings that are landmarks in our city's core will help create an interesting, appealing, and urban skyline. The city of Eugene hasn't built up because it didn't have to, but the time has come. We should think of this as an opportunity to come of age and start creating a diverse new skyline for Eugene, including diversity in signage. Thank you for considering this testimony. Thank you. Tom Stewart, followed by Brittany Quick Warner. Hello, uh, members of City Council and Mayor Lucy Bennis, thank you for your time. My name is Tom Stewart. I live at 2628 Edgewater Drive in Ward 5. I grew up in Eugene and I now work here as a young professional. I support the proposed sign for the Gordon Hotel at the Fifth Street Public Market expansion and I support the height limit amendment. I ask you to please do the same. The proposed Gordon Hotel sign is attractive and I think it will receive positive reviews from both locals and visitors. With regard to the height limit amendment, the request to increase the height limit by 30 feet is reasonable and will help advance the city's goal of greater density. That being said, the main reason I'm providing my support and testimony tonight is because I see the bigger picture of what your support for these proposals and the Fifth Street Public Market expansion project would mean for the, re for the revitalization of Eugene's downtown area. Most, if not all, of you have communicated as a desire to find solutions for revitalizing downtown. In addition, I think most, if not all of you, would agree that the current Fifth Street Public Market property has been a positive asset to downtown. The Fifth Street Public Market property is very attractive. The property significantly increases foot traffic in its area of downtown, helping all surrounding businesses, and the property itself is home to numerous great businesses. Since the current Fifth Street Public Market property is such a positive asset to downtown, I find it easy, easy to conclude that the Fifth Street Public Market expansion project will also be an asset to downtown. I understand that, that downtown won't be revitalized overnight by one project. However, the Fifth Street Public Market expansion project will be a step in the right direction, putting Eugene one step closer than it was before to having a revitalized downtown. One step closer to a revitalized downtown is something all people in Eugene can cheer for. As the leaders of the city government, your support for the Gordon Hotel sign and the height limit amendment would send a clear positive message to other companies who might be interested in investing downtown. The message would be that the city government is a good working partner is willing to pursue reasonable solutions to initial rises. This is a tremendous opportunity and is yours for the taking. This clear message will help to attract additional companies and investments to the downtown area, accelerating the revitalization of downtown. Thank you. Thank you. Edit, or you can talk real you fast. You can talk fast. <laughs> <laughs> Brittany go, Quick Warner. Followed, right. uh, Brittany followed by uh, Karen, Cle uh, Karen Cleveland. <laughs> that was hard to follow. I don't think I can talk that fast. Uh, good evening, Mayor and City Councilor. My name is Brittany Qu Quick Warner. I am the President and CEO of the Eugene Area Chamber of Commerce and a resident of Ward 8. I'm here tonight speaking in support of several issues in front of you, um, but I too am just going to take um, one opportunity. Uh, the vision for this market district expansion is, is inspiring and exciting for our community. The decisions in front of you tonight represent just a few of the many small details that have to go into creating a community asset like the one proposed. Supporting these small changes make it possible to realize the incredible investment in the future and revitalization of our downtown. They're small details, but they go into this bigger vision for what we're all trying to create. The proposed height expansion is minimal and carefully considered by the Planning Commission and others, and I believe is inappropriate for the environment and the use of the space. The sign on the future Gordon Hotel is classic and nostalgic, and it helps tie this portion of the community to the past while creating a vibrant future destination. Our community is undergoing many exciting changes, and we greatly appreciate the and we appreciate the care that you guys take um, in shaping the future of our community and each of these decisions that you have to make. Whether it's these three ordinances um, that will allow this incredible um, investment and development in the, in the market expansion, or the ordinances that you'll be considering for creating a smoke-free community, or the thousand foot buffers, each of them are a small piece of a bigger vision. And I think that's what we really wanna help remind folks of, is that each, each one of them in themselves is not gonna get us anywhere, but continuing to take the steps necessary to get, her to that, get us to that bigger vision is what we have to keep our eye on. Thanks. Thank you. Karen Cleveland. Karen? No, she's not here. Okay, Karen Randall. Karen Randall? 
Not here also. Okay, so we're Claire Barnum. There we go. <laughs> Hello, Mayor and City Council. My name is Claire Barnum. I am the Executive Director of Downtown Eugene, Inc. and a resident of Springfield, though I've lived in the community my whole life. I'm here in support of the Building Height Amendment. I think this is an opportunity to increase the city's ability to expand upwards as opposed to outwards. And I think that's essential to the growth of any downtown and a community in general. The height limit amendment would also create an appealing stair-step effect from the city core down to Skinner's Butte. I'm also here in support of the sign amendment. Downtown is a vibrant and special part of our city. The proposed market expansion is exciting for our space. So what better way to celebrate our unique city than with a distinctive sign that conveys a sense of place and vitality. When I think of iconic attributes in other cities, signs like Portland's White Stag sign and San Francisco's Garibaldi sign, come to mind. In fact, I have snapped photos of these, sent them to my family and said, look where I am and I don't even have to say what city it is. And I'm sure other people have done the same. So uh, I just wanna say it's, it's our turn now. So let's support the height extension and the sign code ordinance. Thank you. Thank you. And our final speaker uh, opposed to this is Kimberly Gladen. Kimberly here, Jeez. there she is. Hi, Kimberly Gladen. I live downtown. I'm not opposed to the Fifth Street expansion. I have concerns about increasing the building height around Skinner's Butte and blocking the view of our iconic Butte. Um, to me, that symbolizes Eugene. When I see the flag waving on top, it's kind of a symbol to me that everything is all right in the world. I also have concerns about a big giant sign you know, I granted it might be an iconic sign, but does a sign really define our town? When I'm on top of the view, I see the big iconic O over at Autzen Stadium, and it kind of ruins the view of that part of town. And so I have concerns about these things changing our more green and environmental landscape into something more, let's say, Nevada bright signs, big tall buildings. So um, I'm just gonna ask you to please consider this in your decisions and um, in their designs. Thank you. Thank you. So that is our final testimony. Is there a staff response to anything that's been said? No, Mayor, there isn't. Okay. The proponent applicant may now have their opportunity to, to provide a final rebuttal, although it's pretty much all in favor. So. Guess not. Are there any questions that counselors wish to ask of staff? Any clarifications? Okay. At this time, I will close the public hearing and the public record. All right. We are on to the second hearing. Uncodified sign ordinance. Uh, I am opening the public hearing. I'll open it. Open the public hearing on a proposed uncodified ordinance that will allow one illuminated roof sign on a specific property located at the northeast corner of 6th Avenue and Oak Street. Those wishing to speak during this public hearing should have already submitted a completed request to speak form to the information desk. Do any counselors need to disclose any bias, conflicts of interest, ex parte communications, or abstentions pursuant to EC 9.70653? And we're probably more or less in the same place as we were last time. So I think we're clear on that. Um, before we proceed, I want to state that anyone testifying has the right to address and rebut the substance of the ex parte communication just disclosed. Have staff received any challenges to a counselor's impartiality submitted pursuant to Eugene Code Section 9.70655? No. City Manager, would you please introduce the topic? Uh, Mayor, there's not a lot more to add than what's already been actually testified to earlier or what you've talked about, but this is just a public hearing concerning a site-specific ordinance to allow a sign on top of the proposed Gordon Hotel, and the sign would be exempted from code requirements, including its height above the ground, and would be subject to specific requirements outlined in the ordinance. Okay. 
Testimony presented at this public hearing should be directed toward the applicable approval criteria or other criteria that the speaker believes applies to the decision. The applicable approval criteria for this proposed land use code amendment are from Eugene Code Section 9.8065, which states that a land use ordinance must be, one, consistent with the applicable statewide planning goals as adopted by the Land Conservation and Development Commission, Two, consistent with applicable provisions of the comprehensive plan and applicable adopted refinement plans. And three, in the case of establishment of a special area zone, the proposed land use code amendment must be consistent with EC 9.3020 criteria for establishment of an S special area zone. The failure of anyone to address an issue accompanied by statements or evidence sufficient to afford the city council and parties an opportunity to respond will preclude appeal on that issue. The request to speak forms have been separated into three groups and speakers will be called in the following order. Those in support of the proposed land use code amendment, those with a neutral position, and those opposed to the proposed land use code amendment. Please give your name and address when you come to the podium to speak. You will have three minutes to comment. The timer and lights on the podium indicate the time you have to speak. A yellow light will come on when you have 15 seconds to complete your comment. The red light indicates the end of two minutes. I'll now open the public hearing with those in support of the land use ordinance. And oh, there they are. Thank you. And it looks like we have 17 speakers. So we'll begin with Sue Pritchard, followed by Andy Vibora. Thank you. My name is Sue Pritchard. I still live at 2671 Emerald Street. <laughs> Some of the most interesting and attractive places that I've been lucky enough to visit have distinctive and memorable signs. Seattle, Vancouver, Portland, San Francisco, Paris, New York. These signs give a city character. They give you a sense of where you are, that you're in someplace different, someplace special. Signs create their own sense of nostalgia as each person brings to it a different experience, but the sign becomes the marker, the memory. They're important for creating a strong sense of place. They become beloved identifiers. As a city, we've been working hard to establish a stable downtown. There are many efforts in many categories, including retail strategies, public safety improvements, family-focused activities, business recruitment, and so on. But the category that does not get much attention is the category of physical icons that tell you where you are. Tasteful, bold, and iconic signage can do that. The proposed sign for this project is tasteful, iconic, nostalgic, and appropriate in this commercially focused location and will contribute positively to establishing this, this area and our city as a very special place. I strongly encourage you to support the sign code except exemption. Thank you very much. Thank you. Andy Fabora, followed by Sean Camblin. Good evening. Uh, my name is Andy Vibora. I live at 232 Chimney Rock Lane, Eugene 97404. Today, uh, representing Travel Lane County. And the nearly $1 billion in the Lane County uh, hospitality industry. So we're pretty excited about the growing industry that we have here in Lane County and Eugene being the center of the Eugene Cascades and Coast region. Uh, we're excited about that and everything that's going on. Growing the hospitality industry requires many elements and when done well, these elements create vibrancy and a sense of place where locals and visitors will come, stay, play, eat, and shop. The OB de development along 6th Avenue is a development that contains all these key elements and is sure to become a go-to stop for leisure travelers and visitors who are in town for a convention or a sporting event. Travel Lane County supports the OB development's request to first increase the height limit for their project and for future projects along 6th Avenue. Second, to vacate the alley in order to develop, for the development to be designed to its maximum potential. And to this point, uh, the last exception for the sign code in allowing the electronic sign to be pl placed atop the Gordon Hotel. Uh, Eugene has many exciting projects coming to life and we believe the hospitality industry will play a key role in ensuring these projects are successful. However, your support is needed to see that these projects uh, are positioned for success. So thank you for your hard work. Uh, for being a good partner to the hospitality industry, and we look forward to continuing this strong relationship with the city and our members 
Um, together, I think we can really grow uh, business and create the jobs in the economy that uh, we all desire. Thank you. Thank you. Sean Camlin. Sean, has he left? Okay. Um, uh, Michael DeLuise. <clears throat> and he'll be followed by Roger Rutan. Good evening. I'm Michael DeLuise, 251 West Broadway. I'm the chair of the Downtown Neighborhood Association. And no complaints tonight. Uh, we see good things happening. Your downtown neighbors are thrilled with the progress on the riverfront, and we actually anxiously await your approval and support of the exciting and much needed OB project. DNA supports the OB developers' request to ease the building height requirements, and we welcome the signage they designed to top their new hotel. This project will stand as an inviting landmark, complementing and brightening the path to the new pleasant vibrance of downtown Eugene. A special thanks to Councillor Emily Semple and those of you who've listened to our concerns about street safety and our request for a thousand foot buffer for future cannabis stores. Every day our community is getting safer, more welcoming and cleaner as we set a new vibrant as we sense a new vibrant personality emerging. We greatly appreciate that you listen to us. In return, we offer our assistance and full support for those worthy efforts you are working on to strengthen the future of our wonderful city. We hope you will move forward with the OB project and the thousand foot buffer for new cannabis retailers. And we thank you very much for your good work and for working with us. Thank you very much. Thank you. Roger Rutan, right. followed by Jacob Fox. Good evening. My name is Roger Rutan, uh, 38933 Meadow Creek Lane in Marcola. Uh, I'm here tonight to urge the City Council support of the sign cone exemption uh, for the Fifth Street Public Market expansion. Uh, I served on the City Council uh, when the uh, current sign code was developed. Uh, I was on the Council for two terms. Uh, from 1985 through 1992, representing Ward 8. Uh, and I would like to share with, with the council today that you know what the discussion was at that time, now 26 plus years ago, the council struggled with content uh, and how much space, how many attributes, uh, what to offer businesses so they had ample and reasonable opportunity to talk about their business, wh whether it be just their name or their brand or their logo. Uh, we actually thought that was going to be the, the easy part, and it turned out that it was, was far from that. The part we spent is probably as, as much time on, maybe more so, what was a character piece, and that is as a, as a council then that was as diverse and as uh, forward-looking as this council. How to, to, how to develop and put into place in, in the sign code ordinance and the language uh, some kind of vision for the future. And, and needless to say, there's no way we could possibly see what would have, would have occurred here over the last number of years. But character was an important part of, of, of that discussion at that time. I would strongly encourage the, the, the council today in, in, in your consideration of the request for the Fifth Street Public Market that you choose character over content and, and that you support this proposal. Thank you very much much. Thank you. Jacob Fox, followed by Bob Hart. Uh, Mayor of Venice Council members, my name is Jacob Fox. Uh, my address is 177 Day Island Road. I'm speaking to you this evening um, as the Executive Director of Homes for Good. And as you know, uh, we connect people with zero to low income uh, to homes in our community, affordable homes. And in a given year, we serve over 5,000 uh, individuals and families. So we at Homes for Good are excited to support the OB company's uh, modest amendment request uh, to the city code to allow for an exciting redevelopment of current surface parking lots. I can tell you we've worked together with Brian and Casey since 2011, um, and this is not just about their project, but it's also about developing affordable housing in the downtown core so that people with low incomes uh, have a place to live close to their work. Um, so uh, we are fully behind uh, this mixed-use development, and it's consistent with numerous city plans and policies to uh, <coughs> increase the vibrancy of downtown. Uh, and to put uh, affordable housing into the infrastructure uh, as part of that uh, redevelopment. 
Uh, you all know more than anyone that the vision for Eugene means we need to provide compact urban development in the downtown area. And this project is exactly what we need. It implements Envision Eugene pillars, uh, Eugene downtown plan policies, regional economic plan policies, and the Eugene Climate and Energy Action Plan. This development will allow residents to live in a sustainable manner while utilizing transit, bicycles, and walking to nearby commercial areas and services. Uh, more important than anything for us is it also creates housing uh, for people at all income levels. And I'm urging you to support the rooftop uh, sign height limit increase and alley vacation amendment requests. I thank you for the opportunity to speak. Thank you. Bob Hart, followed by Jody Summers. Madam Mayor, uh, members of the council, city manager. <clears throat> Bob Hart, uh, 189 Brayburn Drive, uh, 97405. Uh, I wanted to speak tonight uh, towards the sign, uh, the requested sign amendment, uh, and speak to a, a historical perspective. It seems to me we have a template currently in the city with a rooftop sign, uh, which uh, I actually have some photographs of in 1927 and 1956 in variations on the current sign. And of course, I'm talking about the Eugene Hotel, which has an iconic sign on the roof. Uh, neon signs, which actually, of course, are represented by the photographs I, I have uh, and in the collection of the Historical Society. Uh, neon signs were very, very popular historically from the 1920s and now have been replaced by electronic signs. But it was the Wild West here with neon signs. If you look at the historical record, we had neon signs that stretched across whole streets. Uh, the Heilig Theater sign being one of the good examples. And believe it or not, the Eugene Hotel also having a sign which stretched uh, fully across the street. Uh, so what I'm trying to say is the historical record is replete with lots of signage. Uh, we're talking about something which mimics a neon sign. Uh, we have a current icon uh, on a hotel we're asking for a, a waiver, an amendment, uh, to put another icon on another hotel. I don't see anything historically to object to. Uh, one other comment, last time I spoke to you, I spoke about the riverfront. I kind of said it was a no-brainer. Uh, I said that uh, you all are at a historic moment. I think you've heard that from other testimonials tonight. And the OB expansion is another one of those uh, examples of that historic moment. Thank you. Thank you. Jody Summers, followed by Jessica Blaine. Good evening, Mayor Venice and City Council members. Um, it's my pleasure to be up here tonight and speak in favor of the amendments for the OB project and also for the buffer zone between marijuana uh, cannabis uh, businesses. Um, but what I'd like to speak about now is the OB project and why I am in support. I didn't say my address, so I'm at 22636 Williams Way in No Tie. But I work for Essex General Construction here in Eugene. And from working in construction um, and working with architects and engineers, I've done a lot of studying about city planning and uh, sustainability and my concerns are density and that we don't want urban sprawl in this community. We want density so that there are not a lot of cars going um, every which way. I'd rather see density built in town, especially in downtown. And uh, this also affects housing. We need to build more housing in this community and building up and building densely will support that. The sign amendment is what I'm also up here in this order to speak about. And the sign is iconic. And you do, I mean, who hasn't had a picture by Pike Place Market with the sign or Ghirardelli Square or, you know, who doesn't see that white stag sign and think, 
wow, this is so cool. I'm in Portland. I'm, you know, in San Francisco. I'm in Seattle. And I'm in Eugene, and I'm proud to be here. And um, I want that vibrancy downtown. I want the continued growth downtown. And I believe this development supports that, supports density, and supports our community. Thank you. Thank you. Jessica Blaine, followed by Larry Gilbert. Thanks for the opportunity to speak. I'm here in support of the sign, but also the height uh, limit adjustment and the alley vacation. When I think about Eugene, um, and I'm at 85097 Territorial Road, so I'm a little ways out, but I make my way into town every morning to come to work. I work at the, I'm the COO and creative director for the Marche Restaurant Group. And I've watched the Fifth Street Market community flourish out my, outside my office window every day. Um, but when I think about Eugene, I think about community as I'm making my way into town. I think about creativity. And I think about all the wonderful things that make our city so great. Um, but what I don't often think about is boldness, big, bold steps um, made with vision for the future and commitment to an exciting present. The beauty of the Market District project, the hotel, the housing, the public spaces, and the iconic sign is that it offers all of that, that creativity, that attention to community building and quality of life in our downtown core. It offers it to a range of people, all in one bold, visionary package filled with jobs and a truly local development that has a sense of place. So let that sign be a signal of that boldness for Eugene's future. Thank you. Thank you. Larry Gilbert, followed by Dana Terrell. Dana, Dana Terrell, sorry. Uh, Larry Gilbert, um, 1834 Fairmount Boulevard, um, Eugene. Um, I'm a landscape architect, and I've been before the council last year. We talked about coordinated, the coordinated downtown project, trying to figure out where the courthouse was going to sit and where the city hall was going to sit. And um, I'm th and when, when I was working on that project with the council and with um, the courthouse, I mean with the uh, uh, Lane County, I was thinking about um, iconic ideas and place making and all the things that have been said here as well. Um, but another thing that hasn't been really said yet is uh, wayfinding and kind of figuring out where you are in the world and in a place. And um, I believe the, in support of the sign and in support of the, the uh, building height and uh, the alley uh, easement or uh, vacation. Um, but the, the placemaking, um, I mean, the wayfinding component of that is, is really unique to this sign and, the, and this building. Um, obviously, the hotel will be an anchor at the, at the corner of six there. But if you see where the, the sign is oriented, it's really, it's, it's really a kind of a regional expression for, of our community um, to the world. Um, if you're coming from I-5 and you cross Ferry Street Bridge, you're going to see that sign is the first thing, and that's going to mark, mark that market district for you. When you're coming from the U of O and you're going down Franklin and then along 6th, the sign is going to express itself there and help identify where you are um, in, in downtown and where the market district is to that, especially if, even if you're walking downtown, like on you know, Broadway or, or 8th or, or 7th, you'll look over the treetops of those oaks that are along 6th, and you'll see that sign, and you'll know where to go or, or, or how to find that place. So I'm just totally in support of, of anything about building density, um, wayfinding, placemaking in our community, and this is an exciting project, and I'm totally supportive of it. Thank you. Dana Terrell, followed by J.B. Carney. Madam Mayor and City Council, City Councilors and City Manager, thanks for truly thank you for the work that you do and the service that you do for our city. I am here in support of the proposals before you for the Fifth Street Public Market expansion. All of the three, which I think are pretty reasonable and in really in the context of the bigger picture of creating something that will add a, a number of positive elements to our community. I should go back and say my name is Dana Terrell, and I live at 3365 Lake Glen in Mike Clark's ward in uh, Ward 5. And I also own a small business in downtown Eugene. And my view from my building at the U.S. Bank building is right on some of our icons, the, the Holt Center, the Skinner Butte. I can see Fifth Street Public Market from my office. 
And I would look forward to having this sign in my view as I look out my window from my office. I think it would add to the view. I would add to definitely that placemaking element and that historic and artistic value. I'm also on the boards of Traveling County and the Arts and Business Alliance of Eugene. So from both all of those perspectives, I can support the effort of what the Fifth Street uh, Public Market and the OB development is putting forward. I think that we would get more uh, visitor interest, we would have more economic vitality, and truly a sense of pride, a, a further sense of pride in our downtown Eugene, and a building up of our, our downtown core for all of those positive aspects. So I would encourage you to uh, support the, the project in its entirety. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> J.B. Carney, followed by Eric Parrish. Good evening, Mayor, City Council members. My name is J.B. Carney. I live at 142 Spencer's Crest Drive here in Eugene. Uh, I'm here tonight to speak in favor of all three uh, OB development uh, proposals in front of you. However, in particular, I'd like to speak to the sign amendment. Um, I currently serve as the general manager of the Inn at the Fifth uh, and as a board member for Traveling County. However, I'd like to take those hats off tonight and speak to you as a resident who moved here because of the experience I had as a visitor over five years ago. Uh, the beauty in this community and what we have to offer is unmatched. It is by far one of the best communities I have ever been to. Um, there's not a day that goes by that I don't count myself lucky to, to be a part of this, uh, this community. Um, and we're on the verge of something great here in downtown. I've watched this, uh, this city change over the last five years, and I think we're at a historic point. Uh, this project and the sign are a big part of that. Not only does the sign help tell the story of Gordon Obie and the hotel, but it's a nod to our history and our heritage. It's a nod to the historic district of Eugene. However, more importantly, it's a beacon of what's to come. It's a sign to tell people, visitors, that they've arrived not just to a vibrant district, but a thriving downtown and a wonderful, wonderful community to live and be a part of. Thank you very much. Thank you. Eric Parrish, followed by Irene Altucker. Good evening, my name is Eric Parrish. I live at 3167 Riverbend Avenue, Eugene 97408. And I'm here to support the uh, sign ordinance uh, for the OB build out. And um, the last time that these uh, sign uh, ordinances were looked at was when I was 10 years old, living here in Eugene. I was actually at Fifth Street Public Market and my father's retailer. Uh, he sold jewelry out of the Fifth Street Public Market. And so I grew up there. Um, and so it has a lot of meaning to me, that market um, downtown does. This city does. I've lived over here 36 years. I've only been outdone by Mr. Obi, uh, 20 years beyond me. So he's a local investor uh, that's in an opportunity zone that's federally um, been designated. And I think we need to use local dollars, local investors uh, to expand some of these and take, uh, take advantage of some of these opportunities. So I really support um, these changes this evening and hope that you would consider this. Thanks. Thank you. Irene Altucker, followed by Nicole Rosilio. Good evening, Mayor, City Manager, and City Councilors. My name is Irene Altucker. I live in Ward 3 at 1314 East 21st. I've been excited about the Fifth Street public market expansion for a number of years. And tonight I'm speaking to you as a 29-year resident of Eugene, and in March I joined the OB Companies as their Director of Real Estate. I serve on the Arts and Business Alliance of Eugene board with John Barry, and I thought his testimony captured the essence of the importance of the proposal in front of you tonight, and I want to read it into the record. Please accept this testimony in support of the Fifth Street Public Market Expansion Plans as designated and submitted, specifically the height limit request, sign ordinance variance, and alley vacation. 
As a patron of the arts in Eugene and former arts administrator, I'm excited about the prospect of additional resources being made available to local artists through the planned expansion, particularly opportunities for local visual artists to display and sell their creative works to the public. Such opportunities are one of the primary needs that artists in our community face as they work to make a living by their craft and enliven our wonderful city through their creativity and dedication. I appreciate the careful thought put into the project design and the attention paid to honoring the historical character of the area. Undoubtedly, this effort will provide yet another anchor together with the existing Holt Center for the Performing Arts, the University of Oregon's planned renovation of the property at 510 Oak Street into faculty artist studio for a much needed cultural district in the heart of downtown. The proposed rooftop sign especially is attractive and an integral part of the plan as it will draw attention to the new district and become a distinguishing marker for community members and visitors alike. Thank you. Thank you. Nicole Roselio, followed by Karen Cleveland. Good evening. My name is Nicole Roselio and I live at 153 Tara Linda Avenue. I'm here in support of all proposals under review today as part of the OB Company's team, but would like to speak to the rooftop sign ordinance. As marketing director, I understand the importance of design and would like to share a few excerpts from a letter of support from Tyler James, a colleague at a well-respected design firm in town, AHM Brands. Downtown Eugene is on the cusp of undergoing a visionary enhancement that incorporates the downtown core, the upcoming expansion of the University of Oregon, and local economic growth spurred by the development of the technology and innovation sector. An iconic sign on top of the Gordon Hotel provides the perfect means to honor the past through a retro aesthetic, appropriate for an area that once supported several hotels built along the still working rail line, while communicating Eugene's commitment to what's next, an ever evolving, vibrant, and sustainable downtown core. If we want Eugene to be a thriving engine for people to build careers and families, how the community is perceived by tourists, job seekers, and other visitors becomes crucial. Signs of development, change, and progress subtly power, but powerfully suggest commitment to a healthy, vibrant, responsible, managed city. An iconic sign atop the Gordon Hotel lets all who visit downtown know that Eugene is an energetic, maturing city that looks forward with optimism and enthusiasm to what the future holds. Thank you. Thank you. Karen Cleveland? Nope. Uh, Sharon, oh, still not here, right. Sharon Randall? No. Brian Obi. Mayor, I'll take their time. <laughs> <laughs> Mayor, council, you too as well, city manager. Uh, I live at 205 East 6th Avenue. I'm in uh, actually in uh, Eugene Skinner's ward, <laughs> uh, currently occupied by uh, Councilor Surratt. And it's interesting to me that I have 150 years, maybe how things have changed or haven't changed, and who might be sitting here 150 years looking back on what Eugene's all about. And I think that's what we're all about here tonight. And I'm here tonight certainly to speak in favor of everything that's on the table, but also to speak in favor of the Eugene City Council, mayor, staff, becoming partners in this project. This is a big project. This is the largest project, private project, ever conceived and carried out in downtown Eugene. And think about that, it's on our watch. And it is the largest. And we can we make it happen? Can we make it happen right? And that is what this is about. That's, it is about a sign. But it's not about a sign for a hotel. It's about a sign for Eugene. It's about lighting this place up. It's about creating energy and excitement. And it's about showing the world that we're prepared to step bold, as somebody said, and to step out and to make some things happen. And maybe risk a mistake. Maybe risk a mistake. And that's such a big deal. You know, we need to step forward. And then we're here to embrace the city council, the city. You know, it's not uh, surprising to me that every councilor's had a conversation about this. This community's had a conversation about this. We would, you don't get editorials and register guard and positive letters to the editor, et cetera, et cetera, in favor. This project's got something of a karma. It's got support in this community. And it, right now it is in your lap. And it won't be just these three issues. Not just these three issues. 
because there's more to come. There's more to make happen, and it won't be easy, but let's do it together. So thank you for that. Thank you. Uh, okay, now we're moving into folks who are neutral. John Borofsky. Good evening, Mayor and Council. My name is John Borofsky, 2010 Hubbard Lane, and I am here tonight representing myself, not any boards, commissions, or committees that I may sit on. I'm here to talk about the sign code in general and the fact that it may need some tweaking. Um, since Roger Rutan helped implement it over 25 years ago, there are, there are issues with it. Um, some that I've run, run across, one that you're running across tonight, a extensive two-tiered land use uh, code amendment just to get a sign put on the top of a hotel. Um, that sign would be okay if it was 30 feet above the ground, but it's not okay at 80 feet above the ground. There's other issues with the sign code. Um, an A-frame sign, you've all seen them along, along the, the corridors. They're okay downtown, but they're not okay outside of downtown. Somebody told me once it was because of safety, but the city of Eugene puts A-frame signs in front of the library. If it's safety, why would they do that? If there's a, a touring show of a, of a Broadway musical, a huge banner can go up on the Halt Center. It can go up there because it's a city-owned property. Couldn't go up anywhere else in the city. These are just a few of the issues that the, the sign code has embedded into it. There's new technologies coming out, digital display signs. Somebody's going to come to you before that. Same thing. I want a one-off code amendment for that. I think it's time that we take a look at the sign code. It's a contentious issue, and there's all kinds of things, but it, it should be looked at, and that's what I'm talking about today. So I'm not for, against. I just think that there's an issue that council could address. Thank you. And now we have a few folks opposed, beginning with Susan Connolly, followed by Isaac McCoy Sulentic, I think. Good evening, Council and Mayor. My name is Susan Connolly. I'm a res resident of Ward 1. I live downtown. You know, as all these business people were testifying about the iconic, historic, uh, well, I forgot the other one, place that we would recognize by this sign, I thought, gee, I think we're talking about two different signs. Now, a big red sign is not uh, the white stag sign in Portland that tells everybody you're in Portland that's been there for God, I don't know how long, a long time, 70, 80 years. My understanding is, if I, maybe I'm wrong on this, that it's a big sign. It's very, very tall. Apparently, it is electrified. It is in plain block uh, letters. It's not a script or anything attractive. And it says hotel. Now, how does that say anything about Eugene? It doesn't. It says there's a hotel here. Come and stay at our hotel. So all these discussions about it being a sign and a, a lifter of spirits for all of the city, I don't think so. I think it's a sign that says hotel. And it's, I think, a very unattractive sign. And it doesn't say anything as far as I'm concerned about our city. It says hotel, and it asks you to remember that. Thank you. Thank you. Isaac McCoy Sulentic, followed by Kimberly Gladen. My name is Isaac McCoy Sulentic. I live at 1355 Bailey Avenue in Ms. Surrett's ward. The question of whether this sign is iconic probably can't be answered for decades. All the examples they gave are decades at least old. So I think it's a little bit of hubris to say that this is going to be the symbol of Eugene today. Um, if we rule by exception, then there is a good chance that more people will come asking for exceptions. And then what if someone builds a more iconic sign and then the Gordon Hotel sign is forgotten? Um, so I think it's a a bit of a specious argument to say we're going to gain this large iconic thing today uh, before it's existed for decades. 
I was at Art in the Vineyard, uh, and I walked across the Autzen footbridge. I looked down the river, and I feel like I could probably see the sign from the Autzen footbridge if it were up today. And that's not the view I want from the Autzen footbridge. I think one of the great things about our city is this mix of green space and a low-rise residential city, and that's changing, and I think that's great. And the height amendment is great. Um, you know, the, the building will be obsolete from an energy efficiency standpoint by the next code cycle, but, you know, we'll get some density out of it. So I think we need, I don't want to be Portland. I don't want to live in Portland. I want to live here. And to me, having a sign that I could see from the river makes me feel like I'd be in Portland. Um, so I'm against it. Thank you. Thank you. And our final speaker is Kimberly Gladen. Kimberly Gladen, downtown. Um, I think I want to start by um, quoting a song. Signs, signs, everywhere signs, blocking up the scenery, breaking my mind. I mean, it's an old song, but it still stands. I mean, do we really want to define our city by a sign? We have a lot of signs already that define our city. Homeless, buy me beer. Homeless, buy me weed. Um, college student, buy me weed college student, buy me a burger. You know, I mean, I don't think the sign's going to change any of that. And that really is what has become to define our town. Um, another neon sign blaring in people's faces, another neon sign, more light pollution. Um, it's hard to see the stars. And um, I really don't like the idea of our town becoming a neon jungle of signs. One variance is going to lead to another cascade. Everyone's going to want a variance. That's kind of how it is. Everybody's going to want an iconic sign on their building drawing attention to it. And I really feel what to me is an icon of our city is the greenery, the trees, the flowers. I mean, I can't tell you how many times I've had visitors ask me, where is the middle of downtown? And I say, you're in it. And they look around and they go, well, this can't be the middle of downtown. There's all these flowers. There's all these trees. Where's all the concrete that should be here? And I tell them, well, it's there. But the flowers and the trees are what really defines us. And I don't think a neon sign to draw you to one place or another. You know, like I said, everyone's going to want one. So think about it. Thank you. That uh, closes the public comment. Is there a staff response to anything that's been said? No, ma'am. OK. The proponent applicant may now have their opportunity to provide a final rebuttal. I don't know if there's any need for a rebuttal. Doesn't look like it. OK. Uh, are there any questions that counselors wish to ask of staff? Any questions? Did you wish to speak to this, Councillor Clark? Thank you, Mayor. I just wanted to say that uh, I appreciate everybody's testimony on this. Um, I can't remember the last time I've seen so many people from my Ward 5 here at a council meeting, and I just want to say it feels wonderful. Please come back again soon. Um, <laughs> My father spent his whole career and 45 years of his life in the sign industry, and after a couple decades in marketing myself, I want to agree with uh, John Borofsky. I think our sign code is woefully out of out of touch with the, the kind of things that occur today, and I, I suppose I'm giving notice that I'd like a work session poll on that for later in the fall or for perhaps even first of next. We're in no huge hurry, but I agree it's, it's woefully out of date, and we need to uh, take a look at that. Thanks. Right. Thank you. At this time, I am closing the public hearing and the public record. So thank you very much. All right, we are on to hearing number three, uh, alley vacation. I am opening the public hearing on a proposed ordinance to vacate East Fifth Alley located between Pearl Street and Oak Street and to vacate a portion of Pearl Alley located between East Fifth Alley and East Sixth Avenue. Those wishing to speak during this public hearing should have already submitted a completed request to speak form to the information desk. Do any counselors need to disclose any bias, conflicts of interest, ex parte communications, or abstentions pursuant to EC 9.70653? Point and clear. 
And do you all have the same challenge? Everybody's got it. We're on record for that. Um, before we proceed, I want to state that anyone testifying has the right to address and rebut the substance of the ex parte communication just disclosed. Have staff received any challenges to a counselor's impartiality submitted pursuant to Eugene Code Section 9.70655? No. Thank you. City Manager, could you introduce the topic? Thanks, Mayor. And the uh, only other pieces that I would add to your introduction is that the co-applicants are Lane County and Mildred OB LLC, who own all of the abutting properties. And the council is scheduled to take action on the ordinance to vacate the alleys on your July 23rd meeting. Testimony presented at this public hearing should be directed toward the applicable approval criteria or other criteria that the speaker believes apply to the decision. The applicable approval criteria for this proposed vacation of improved public right-of-way are from Eugene Code Section 9.8725, which states that the city shall, the city council shall approve or approve with conditions and reservations of easements the vacation of improved public right-of-way public ways acquired with public funds, or undeveloped subdivision and partition plats, or portions thereof, including public right-of-way and improved public easements located therein, only if the council finds that approval of the vacation is in the public interest. The failure of anyone to raise an issue accompanied by statements of evidence sufficient to afford the city council and parties an opportunity to respond will preclude appeal on that issue. The request to speak forms have been separated into three groups and speakers will be called in the following order, those in support of the proposed vacation, those with a neutral position, and those opposed to the proposed vacation. Please give your name and address when you come to the podium to speak. You will have two minutes to comment. The timer and lights on the podium indicate the time you have to speak. A yellow light will come on when you have 15 seconds to complete your comments. The red light indicates the end of two minutes. And our First, we have a total of eight, no wait. Yes, we have a total of eight speakers. Uh, first is Sue Pritchard, followed by Sean Camblin. Hello again, 2671 Emerald, Sue Pritchard. This is the kind of thing that a city does as it grows and evolves, and the public benefit of this project makes this a reasonable and appropriate response. I support this amendment, thank you. Thank you. Sean Camblin, has he left? He's left. Um, Phil Farrington. And he will be followed by Jenny Ullum. Good evening, Mayor, Council. My name is Phil Farrington. I live at 1160 Monroe Street in Ward 1. Congratulations tonight. You all are a uh, party to millions of dollars that are being invested in downtown. Congratulations. And all you need to do, you don't need to bend over backwards to make this happen. All you need to do is to approve the suite of applications that are before you. I'm gonna to speak to all three of these briefly. This implements the downtown master plan and won't be able to happen unless you approve the alley vacation and the height ordinance that's being proposed. The height ordinance is very modest in its uh, implications and its impact been carefully crafted by staff, and I think merits your approval. The alley vacation is something of a perfunctory action. Utility and transportation connectivity will continue uh, to be provided, but is essential for this project to continue. The proposed sign code exception provides for special placemaking downtown. This is gonna help enrich our urban lives. The rooftop sign with a transparent frame, in fact, I would say is preferred to what would be allowed under the code, which would mean that as the Eugene Hotel has a taller tower on top that has a building mounted sign. This is something different. It's something in fact that heralds back to the earlier Eugene Hotel sign uh, on having a transparent frame. Findings are presented in your uh, packet that demonstrate conformance with the applicable criteria. So please take credit for your actions tonight, approving these applications, and I'll see you when this fantastic development opens. Thank you. Thank you. Jenny Ullum, followed by Karen Cleveland. 
Hi, Jenny Olam, 2114 University, and I'm just here very briefly to speak on my own behalf. I'm not channeling Brad Stanglin this time, but representing OB companies. Um, I went to work for OB companies in January to be part of this project because I believe in it, and it just can't happen with the alley vacation. We own, uh, OB owns the uh, northern half of the alley. That's why we're co-applicants with the county, so we would support uh, its vacation and hope you support it as well. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Karen Cleveland is next, but she's still not here. So, all right, we are finished with the supporters. We are now on the one opposed, Sharon Randall, and I believe she is also not here. So I think that uh, ends the public testimony. Is there a response, staff response to anything that's been said? No, ma'am. Okay. The applicant may now have their opportunity to provide final rebuttal, and I'm assuming that there's no need for that. Uh, are there any questions that counselors wish to ask of staff? Looks like not. Oh, I do. I have one. Oh, okay. Uh, Councillor Zelenka. Yeah. Uh, how much was the alley vacation assessed at, and how did you come to that uh, number? Three down and five to go. If you could repeat the question, please. Uh, how, was, how much was the alley vacation assessed at, and how did you come to that number? Um, yeah, Nick Joyello, associate planner with the planning division. Um, public works staff consults with uh, a commercial appraiser to come up with a figure, and they came up with a figure of $37.50 per square foot, and then they subtract uh, an amount uh, for the uh, proposed uh, easement that would be placed back over it to be able to allow the city to go back in and take care of the underground utilities. And so they cut that figure in half to 1875 a square foot. And the total was? And the total amount for the easement? Uh, I think it was 130000 I'd, I'd look at uh, $130,650 total, yeah. All right, thank you. Any other comments, questions of staff? At this time, I will close the public hearing and the public record. Okay, we are on to hearing number four. <laughs> I will now open a public hearing on a proposed land use code amendment to require a 1,000 foot buffer between recreational retail marijuana stores. Those wishing to speak during this public hearing should have already submitted a completed request to speak form at the information desk. If you wish to speak and you have not already done so, please submit that form now. City Manager, would you introduce the topic, please? A Mayor, nothing more to add than what you've already introduced. Fine. Uh, testimony presented at this public hearing should be directed toward the applicable approval criteria or other criteria that the speaker believes apply to the decision. The applicable approval criteria for this proposed land use code amendment are from Eugene Code Section 9.8065, which states that a land use code amendment must be, one, consistent with applicable statewide planning goals as adopted by the Land Conservation and Development Commission, two, consistent with applicable provisions of the comprehensive plan and applicable adopted refinement plans, and three, in the case of establishment of a special area zone, the proposed land use code amendment must be consistent with EC 9.3020 criteria for establishment of an, of an S special area zone. Because this is a legislative code amendment, speakers will be called in the order in which the request forms were received. Please give your name and address when you come to the podium to speak. You will have two minutes to comment. The timer and lights on the podium indicate when you have time to speak. A yellow light will come on when you have 15 seconds to complete your comments. The red light indicates the end of the two minutes. And I will now open the public hearing. I haven't already gaveled it in. And we have uh, nine speakers. First, John Borofsky, followed by Sherry Schaefers. Good evening, Mayor and Council. My name is John Borofsky, and I'm speaking to you tonight as the chair of the Eugene Planning Commission. As you may know, this is a land use decision or change. Uh, we held a public hearing on June 5th, very similar to this one that you're holding tonight. 
to look at the code changes that would be in place. We had uh, deliberate deliberations, um, and we talked about the things that we felt the, the Planning Commission had purview over, things like the, de the definitions of continuing use. Um, what is a thousand feet from, you know, the thing? Is it from the from the property line? Is it from the actual store? These types of things, things that we felt were land use decision things, and came to a recommendation. And I do hope that you look at our recommendations in your AIS. We did feel that there was a lot of things that were brought to before us in public testimony that were outside our purview that were policy decisions that are your all's uh, purview. Things like if I have a, a business or a, a piece of property that is not a dispensary now and it's within 1,000 feet, will I be able to rent it to somebody else? These were decisions that were outside of our recommendation is what the, the Planning Commission felt. Um, we did look at things in the code as to existing uses and, and the way that uh, if a business changes hands, can that business can continue on? And we found that there was a way to do that, and I hope you will discuss that with staff when you come to the deliberations on your, your things. Um, so with that, I would just let it go. And the last thing I would say is on the alley vacation, use the money to offset the purrs. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Next is Sherry Schaefers, followed by Pete Knox. Good evening, Mayor and City Council. My name is Sherry Schaefers, and my address is in Ward 1. I'm here tonight in support of a 1,000-foot buffer zone for the cannabis dispensaries. Currently, retail dispensaries seem to be located in certain pockets of Eugene with a high concentration in the downtown area. It is on course to become a cannabis district. Our downtown needs a broad mix of retail who cater to a variety of consumers. Too much spe specialization of any business type can be a deterrent for new businesses who might be looking for places to locate. Revitalization of our downtown core is still fragile, and we don't have time to wait for traditional business cycles where oversaturated markets adjust themselves. Most municipalities our size have adopted the 1,000-foot buffer or, like Bend, created parameters regarding where dispensaries could be located. Finally, with some of the federal banking limitations for the marijuana industry, they deal a lot in cash. And at some point, I think we have to have some safety concerns with a high number of cash businesses located closely together. Thank you for your consideration. Thank you. Next is Pete Knox, followed by David Wilkin. Good evening, Mayor and Councilors. Um, my name is Pete Knox. I live at 265 West 8th Avenue, uh, Emily Simple's Ward. Um, <clears throat> I'm come to you uh, with my hat, wearing the hat of uh, vice chair of the Downtown Neighborhood Association. Uh, you just heard uh, my fellow board member for uh, downtown uh, to explain some really good points about this. I'm not going to add too much more, but I'm, I want to make sure that uh, it is known that uh, DNA is very, very interested in having this uh, be. Uh, if it's passed, uh, if, you'll, if you see your map that is in the agenda packet that you have for this evening, uh, the area from West University through downtown and the Whitaker District is turning into a, a big zone of uh, pot shops. I, you know, I, I don't think that is a healthy thing um, in the sense of... Uh, Building a community and and uh, allowing for a good business business environment and personal environment. Thank you very much. Thank you, David Wilkin, followed by Sue Pritchard. 
It's uh, David Nelkin, Nelkin uh, and um, I'm not sure uh, I'm in this queue. I'm, I'm actually opposed to this amendment. Do you want it's me to speak now? The order is Doesn't matter. Very good. I sign up. Yeah, I'll repeat myself. I'm David Nelkin, and I, I own a commercial building at 1416 Willamette Street. Uh, because uh, there are, uh, excuse me, um, I would like to keep my options open as to what kind of retail business I can start or rent to at my present property. If you implement this buffer, you will create a already have and can never have class of entrepreneurs. Excuse me. <clears throat> uh, because there are a few pot stores within the thousand feet of my uh, radius of my uh, property, I will not be able to rent to or start in a business uh, of my own choosing relating to pot. Not that I would, but I, I'd like the option to. Uh, had this council initially enacted a thousand foot buffer between pot stores, then we would not be having this debate today. And I think that that's the crux of the matter. I'm here tonight to ask that you keep the current law on uh, distance separation of pot stores. Um, it is just bad policy and bad governance to change the distance buffer. Now, I understand that other communities have this separation clause, but because of these, community, because of these communities started with the 1,000-foot buffer, any retailers there are all on equal footing with each other with respect to location. We do not limit other businesses from locating close to one another. For instance, doctors near hospitals, lawyers around this building, downtown banks with all the cash that they have, just as we heard, and the new hotel that's being proposed tonight across the street from the Hilton. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Sue Pritchard, followed by Tiffany Edwards. Sorry, I hope you don't get too sick of me because I'm going to come up one more time. <laughs> After this, um, Sue Pritchard, 2671 Emerald Street. Still. So although this is a little bit like um, closing the gate after the horses have gotten out, I'm still supportive of this ordinance. I've been involved with a lot of things related to downtown since the late 80s, um, both as a commercial real estate broker and as um, a board member of Downtown Eugene Incorporated for about 20 years. And also I was on the downtown commission for a long time. So I have a lot of um, passion about what happens down there and I have a lot of concern about what happens. Through all of the public engagement that's happened over the last many years, we've decided that we wanted to be a downtown that serves all of the citizens of our city, their guests and their visitors, a downtown that is family friendly and that encourages a wide variety of uses that appeal to a wide variety of users. If that's what we want, then the city's policies should reflect that vision. In my opinion, allowing a high concentration of retail marijuana establishments does not support that vision and our hopes of a vibrant, all-inclusive downtown. So I encourage you to adopt this ordinance. Thank you. Thank you. Tiffany Edwards, followed by Christiane Ochoa. Uh, good evening, Mayor and City Councilors. My name is Tiffany Edwards. Uh, I'm currently residing in Ward 2, soon to be a permanent resident of Ward 5. I'm here representing the Chamber of Commerce, and uh, we represent 1,300 businesses here in Eugene and have several members who are cannabis retailers. We're asking for council to implement a policy that creates at least 1,000 feet between marijuana retail stores and dispensaries. We're asking for bold leadership on this issue and feel it's an important policy that aligns with so many other efforts to improve downtown in particular. This policy has been effective in many other cities in Oregon and has helped create environments where dispensaries have been able to thrive, enhance the diversity of a downtown area, yet remained innocuous since their emergence has not risen to the unfortunate level of nuisance and negative public perception. Here in Eugene, we've seen a proliferation of cannabis retailers in our downtown, limiting opportunities for other types of business and retail, which is critical to a vibrant and thriving downtown economy. The Chamber has supported this policy and as a business organization supports these reasonable regulations on business. The fact is businesses are all regulated to some degree. Whether you're a bar or a restaurant, a coffee shop or a hair salon, you're required to follow various and often numerous regulations in order to operate your business. We feel these regulations for cannabis retailers should be similar to those of liquor stores because they're most similar in the way they operate. They're regulated heavily by the OLCC, 
their products are taxed, they're transactional in nature, meaning that people are not permitted to consume products on site or in public areas, and they only service an adult population of 21 and older. While, li while liquor stores do not specifically have a thousand foot buffer zone restriction, the other policies that govern them would simply not allow for any two stores to be in such close proximity to one another. This ordinance has a lot of support from very diverse organizations and individuals for very good reasons, and we ask that we support uh, your bold leadership on this. Thank you. Thank you. Christiane Ochoa, followed by Sam Barber. Good evening, Mayor um, and City Council. Um, my name is Christiane Ochoa. I am a community health analyst and work for Lane County Public Health in the prevention section. The purpose of this testimony is to provide information on the public health implications of the proposed separation of marijuana businesses. Based on the available science, the research suggests that a thousand foot separation of retail marijuana businesses may be effective as a means of minimizing access, availability, and use of marijuana by youth. There is extensive research regarding the relationship between the use of tobacco, alcohol, and retail density. Extrapolating to marijuana suggests that a well-developed marijuana density policy has the potential to decrease youth access to marijuana, prevent experimental marijuana smoking, decrease youth marijuana use prevalence, reduce the disproportionate health burdens experienced by certain communities, especially lower income populations and communities of color, and decrease the perception that marijuana use is risk-free. Increased visibility of marijuana retailers in everyday environments encourages youth to perceive marijuana use as being common and increases the likelihood of marijuana use. In states such as Oregon, where recreational marijuana is legal, strong zoning ordinances can control density of retail marijuana businesses in order to limit availability and exposure of youth to marijuana products and minimize dependence and addiction. The Lane County Public Health mission is to promote and protect the long-term health and well-being of individuals, families, and our community. The Lane County Public Health Prevention section focuses on areas such as alcohol, tobacco, and drug prevention, and specializes in creating, implementing, evaluating, and providing technical assistance on public health policies. Thank you for your time. Lane County Public Health is happy to answer any questions you may have. Thank you. Sam Barber, followed by Richard Johnson. Mayor, Councilors, uh, thank you for having me here. Uh, my name is Sam Barber here on behalf of Terrapin Care Station, a cannabis retailer and producer here in Eugene um, with a retail shop located at 835 East Park right across the street from where we are today. Uh, since Oregon voters passed Measure 91, we have seen rapid expansion of the re recreational cannabis industry here in Oregon and particularly here in Eugene. Due to the light-handed approach to regulation taken by the state and local governments, as well as the OLCC, uh, we've seen a proliferation of retail cannabis stores, oversaturating the market, driving down the price of cannabis, and putting great stress on the industry as a whole. Without good policy to slow, to slow the proliferation of cannabis businesses, both growers and retailers, we run the risk of a major contraction in the industry, meaning loss of jobs, and the significant investments people have already made in their businesses. Or perhaps worse, we push legal businesses to seek financial stability elsewhere, most likely outside of the regulated market, inviting further scrutiny from the federal government. In June, the OLCC put a hold on new applications for licensure, in part because applications have simply not slowed down. Uh, while a thousand foot buffer in Eugene would not do much to immediately alleviate pressure, on the industry. In the long run, we think it is one part of a larger strategy to help stabilize the cannabis industry. Additionally, we want Eugene's downtown to host a vibrant and diverse mix of businesses that are inviting for people of all ages. Uh, a thousand foot buffer between re retailers is a measured step that has been adopted in numerous other Oregon cities that will help maintain that mix. Policies that help foster a vibrant marketplace and support a diverse mix of businesses throughout Eugene are a win for everyone. And it is important to remember that such an ordinance will not prevent anyone from entering or participating in the industry. It would simply put reasonable parameters around how they do so. Uh, for these reasons, we hope you join us 
in supporting this ordinance. Thanks. Thank you. And our final speaker is Richard Johnson. Not last but not least. <laughs> uh, Richard Johnson, 137 East 13th Avenue. There's a lot of misinformation here tonight. For example, the OLCC did not stop accepting applications for retail pot shops. They put a moratorium on processing. By law, they have to accept. We need to educate ourselves on the subject. I'm going to go really quick here because I have a lot to cover. I really wished I had more time, another minute, to explain all these things. I think I've got really good points. I feel like this is a done deal. <clears throat> We've already sent the mailings to the property owners. We've already had the meeting at the planning place. It's really clear. The wheels are on, and this thing is just ready to go. And, and it feels like my time here is wasted, OK? My, my, I'm an employer, I'm a property owner. I have run a retail business in Eugene for 5,500 days in a row. You're gonna grandfather in a guy a block away from me who's an out-of-state player using out-of-state employees. That just doesn't sit well with me. You all are about to grandfather in three businesses who sold pot to minors. They got cited by the state of Oregon. Really? You're gonna give them that chance? again, and you're not going to give me the chance to wait. As in right now, the Senate is considering legislation to change the banking system. I know I'm not going to open a business where I'm going to pay $1,500 a month for a bank account. These guys are nuts. Do you guys understand that you're going to talk about grandfathering in businesses when some of these businesses are in fact three businesses under one roof for a tax scheme? Okay, ask any of these businesses, are you writing off advertising? If they say yes, they're tax frauds. You're not allowed to write off advertising as a, as a pop, mom and pop pot shop. You're not allowed to write off rent, anything. We're grandfathering in the wrong set of people. Let me, who I have a business plan that can be proven successful. I've been an employer for 15 years. Let me in. Don't box me out. Don't pick winners and losers. Thank you. Thank you. Quiet, please. You can you can do this if you need to applaud. Thank you. Uh, that closes the public speakers. Is there a staff response to anything that we've heard tonight? No, ma'am. Are there any questions that councilors wish to ask staff? Councilor Syrett? So, uh, City Manager, we received some public comment asserting that our police department has reported an increase in crime near re marijuana retail stores, and I believe this is not correct. My recollection is that Eugene police reported a decrease in crime near these establishments, with the exception being fraud, which I think they attributed to people trying to use fake IDs. So I would like to have those facts before us again at our work session when we take action on this. Uh, also, the maps provided to us in our packet, the downtown map does not appear to include Terrapin Care Station across the street from this building. Um, so I'd like an updated map, and I'd also like an approximate count of how many retail establishments of any kind we have in the downtown core, so we can have a relative number of, there are this many marijuana outlets, there are these other businesses. Okay. Thank you. Councilor Zelenka. Yeah, just one question for the work session. Could you bring us back the approximate timing of the of the opening of all these businesses and when they uh, so when they opened as well thanks any other questions of staff okay uh, let's see where does that leave us i will now close the public hearing that's where it leaves us okay we're closed with that thank you all very much and now I believe I'm past my heavily, heavily annotated notes, and now I'm the more, more modestly annotated notes. Uh, next up is a public hearing, a resolution granting a Measure 49 claim and waiving a provision of Chapter 9 of the Eugene Code. Uh, manager, I will let you introduce that. Thank you, Mayor. And tonight's public hearing concerns a claim submitted under ballot measure 49 for compensation or waiver of a land use regulation that the applicant claims reduces the fair market value of their property, which is a vacant alley access lot located adjacent to 20 West 24th Place. The land use regulation in question would limit any dwelling built on the property to 10% of the lot size or 462 square feet in this case. 
In lieu of compensation, staff proposes a site-specific waiver of the building size regulation that would allow the claimant to build a 1,200-square-foot dwelling that complies with all other residential standards. All right. Thank you. Um, I will now open the public hearing. Those wishing to speak during the public hearing must submit a completed request to speak form to the information desk prior to the beginning of the public hearing. When you come to the podium, please give your name, city residence, and for Eugene residents, your ward. If known, you will have two minutes to comment. There are lights on the timer. The red light indicates the end of your two minutes. And we have one speaker, Bill Close. Councilors, Bill Close on behalf of the applicant, 375 West 4th Avenue, Suite 204 in Eugene. Um, this is one of those rare occasions when I can say I totally support the staff report. It doesn't happen often. It's great when it does. Um, <laughs> I've read the materials. I understand there's a uh, equivocal email, a couple of equivocal emails from Paul Conti. Uh, there's a opposition email, I believe, from Paul Aspergen, and there's a friendly supportive uh, letter from a neighbor. So if that's all there is, um, I'm happy and I'll sit down. And uh, if there's been more evidence submitted beyond that, of course, we'd like to uh, ask for some time to look, absorb it and respond to it, which I think the statute provides for. Thank you. Thank you. And that closes the public hearing. Are there any comments from council? Yeah, Councilor Zelenka. Request that the record be open for another week. Second. 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 All in favor? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right. Thank you very much. And uh, any other comments? All right. That, sorry, I already gaveled, but we're done. With that public hearing, uh, I guess now I'm opening another one. There we go. Uh, an ordinance, this is to discuss um, prohibition of smoking on public right-of-way adjacent to opt-in properties, and I will let the manager introduce it. Thank you, Mayor. And this is an opportunity for council to hear public comment on a proposed ordinance to expand smoke-free areas in the city. The pur purpose of the ordinance is to promote community health by reducing the exposure and impacts of secondhand smoke and cigarette litter. The proposed ordinance would expand smoke-free areas to include the public spaces, sidewalks, alleys, and plazas within a defined area of the downtown core. Property owners within the defined area could choose to opt out and create designated smoking areas at any time. The ordinance also includes an opt-in option for smoke-free properties outside the downtown core to create smoke-free areas on the public right-of-way adjacent to their properties. Okay, thank you. So I, uh, those wishing to speak during the public hearing must submit, let's see, or must submit a completed request to speak form to the information desk prior to the beginning of the public hearing. When you come to the podium, please give your name, city of residence, and for Eugene residents, your ward if known. You will have two minutes to comment. There are lights on the timer. The red light indicates the end of the two minutes. And we have 23 speakers on this issue. So first up, uh, Pamela Kraus, followed by Pete Knox. Good evening, Mayor, Council, and Manager. My name is Pamela Kraus. I reside at 2544 and one half Washington Street and um, in Ward 1, and thank you for serving Councilor Semple and for engaging in the Human Rights Commission. This is my first presence here, although I, I usually watch the meetings as broadcast. I regard that it is a human right and responsibility to protect and honor ourselves and others. I am here to speak in support of your decision last week to proceed with the non-smoking ordinance plan. I'm in particularly invested in augmenting the bad health perpetuation of smoking on the city sidewalks surrounding the LTD Transit Center. Thank you, LTD. I understood on morning news this morning that you are in support of this ordinance, and I hope it's true news. 
So on the placards on 10th Avenue or between Olive and Charlton by the library, there are ordinance numbers listed that address carrying wheels and smoke-free admonitions, smoke-free zone admonitions. Across 10th along the sidewalk parallel to the LTD property, there is, are different signs with different requests, different additional ordinance numbers. I think we need to correlate things. We have many definitions and codes, and importantly, they are not usually honored around the LTD station. Perhaps part of this is resulting from the gray nebulous area we have created in terms of definition and area. I hope to coordinate things and have, have notions clearly understood so that we are speaking the same language, have common expectations, and I think we'll have more success. Secondly, okay, that's it. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Pete Knox, followed by Nick Weldon. Once again, good evening, uh, Mayor and Councilors. Uh, my name is Pete Knox. I um, still reside at uh, 265 West 8th Avenue. Um, I am coming before you not wearing any of my public service hats, as it were, just representing myself. I think, I think you've heard me before come up here and say I'm, I, I don't like smoking. Don't like it at all. But I don't really care for the ideas of the city uh, trying to ban it in, in downtown. I, I, it, I just, it just feels to me like a, something, just a, a bridge too far, if you will. I do like the opt-in, opt-out provision that you, I think it's a good compromise for the businesses in, in downtown and the opt-in provision has, you know, for those places like the University of Oregon where there's a, uh, the right-of-way has become an ashtray, it makes sense and it gives property, other property owners the more rights to, to control the areas around their properties. I think those are, I think those are really good provisions. I <clears throat> still oppose the, the legislation itself on principle. Thank you very much. Thank you. Nick Weldon, followed by Sue Pritchard. Hello, excuse me. My name is Nick Weldon, 1475 East 15th, Ward 3. As a non-smoker and proponent of greater public health, I fully support reducing the amount of litter and exposure to smoke in public areas. Unfortunately, this ordinance accomplishes neither of these goals. You cited several cities as examples to smoking bans, but what's been proposed here in Eugene is the weakest among them. Neither Fort Collins nor Boulder allows any exemptions. Ashland and Boise only offer exemptions to bars, and specifically in Ashland, it's limited to the hours of 8 p.m. to 2 a.m. But here in Eugene, it's proposed that any property owner is able to ask for an exemption. Additionally, there's no language regarding how the smoking sections in these will handle, lit handle litter, like in Ashland, where bars with an exemption are required to provide a cigarette disposal container. Excuse me, very nervous. <laughs> Councillor Ye, you were quoted by the Register Guard saying secondhand smoke is a serious health concern and we need to, need to take it seriously. If the goal is cleaner air, why does Eugene's ban provide the most opportunities to opt out? The way it's currently written, we do not get a smoke-free downtown. This leads me to question, why bother with this ordinance that will change nothing for public health and isn't taking a serious stand against it? The Register Guard also stated the city councillors felt this ordinance strikes a balance so residents can enjoy smoke-free outdoor air while allowing others to light up. But there's no balance to clean air and tobacco. It's one or the other. Councillor Taylor, the Register Guard stated that you were concerned the proposed ordinance would displace smokers from downtown into surrounding neighborhoods. I'd like to ask you, if we have exemptions written in, which smokers are you worried about displacing, since patrons of downtown businesses would still be allowed to smoke? These statements and the weak stance on smoking leads me to believe this will place an undue burden on people who are homeless in Eugene. Even as a non-smoker, what I fear more than people smoking downtown is living in a place that passes ineffective public health ordinances at the expense of the poorest in our city. If you want to ban smoking in the public, please do it completely or not at all. Thank you. Thank you. Sue Pritchard, followed by Susan Connolly. Okay, last time, Sue Pritchard, 2671 Emerald. 
There are so many reasons to adopt this ordinance immediately. Here are four good reasons. Secondhand smoke has numerous short-term and long-term consequences for innocent bystanders. One cigarette contains 600 chemicals, 69 of which have been proven to cause cancer, all of which are dispersed into the air of non-smokers who happen to walk through the cloud of smoke. Litter reduction. Cigarette butts account for millions of pieces of litter annually and detract from our downtown's aesthetic appeal. And contrary to popular belief, the cigarette butts are not biodegradable. The lingering odor of cigarettes is public pollution. It gets on your clothes just simply by walking through it and actually stays there for a considerably long period of time. And smoking in public areas violates people's rights to a healthy civic environment. If I had my way, there would be no exceptions, but at the very least, we should enact this ordinance immediately for the health and comfort of 85% of the population who do not smoke. Thank you very much. Oh, and also, because I have a second, I just want to thank you all for what you do. I think it's amazing. I don't have the courage to do what you're doing. I'm very impressed with the time that you spend and the actual care. I mean, I can see on your faces that you care about these topics, and I think that's very impressive. Thank you very much. Thank you. Susan Connolly, followed by David Piccioni. Council and Mayor, I'm Susan Connolly. I still live in downtown Eugene. I've lived in Eugene for 39 years. In 28 of those years, I've owned property and worked and lived in downtown Eugene. I love downtown Eugene. And if any of you, most of you probably, have been here all these many years, you know how much better it is, how beautiful it is. The smoking is not beautiful. The smoking is really, really harmful to all kinds of things, which I'm sure you've heard about. I just want to address two that I don't see mentioned too often. One is that a public uh, employee, a city employee, told me once that when they come down in the morning to clean up, the vast majority of what they clean up is cigarette butts. The second thing I'd like to mention is that those cigarette butts that aren't cleaned up in a timely manner or perhaps come during the rainy time, they go directly into our water. They, they're not, they don't go to the treatment plant. They go to those, those grates you see in the street that say, don't dump here because it goes to the fish. That's where those cigarette butts go. So I would urge you to adopt this ordinance. I wish the council had adopted it a year ago. I agree that it probably doesn't go far enough, but it is a start. And most of us don't smoke, and we have rights to. Thank you, and thank you for your service. Thank you. David Piccioni, followed by Tiffany Edwards. Dave Piccioni, Eugene. Uh, I think any discussion regarding tobacco uh, has to uh, consider the dangerous probability of getting sick. The sickness can be cancer, emphysema, where all your hair falls out, where you might have to speak out of a metal box in your throat, or where you can't take a breath of air because you, 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 all your alveoli are, are puffed up. But uh, I am a smoker, and I enjoy it, and it is my, my, my decision to do that. Now, I will describe two situations, one where there is uh, secondhand smoke, and the other one which I don't think qualifies as such. Before I was a smoker, I lived with five guys in an apartment at, at the university, at Rutgers University, and all of them smoked cigarettes, and they also smoked pot. So because of that, they had to keep the windows closed. And I was the only one non-smoker there. So that was, I understand that the problem is that can cause if you're living with somebody that's smoking. But if you're out in, if you're out in the open and you're smoking, that, that's, it's completely ridiculous to say that, that a person that wants to smoke can't smoke because somebody, I mean, common courtesy, should be on on both sides of this. Uh, person that smokes should be considered to a person who doesn't smoke, and the person that doesn't smoke should be considered to the person that does smoke. And if they need a little room, that's fine. But banning smoking downtown, uh, as a mentally, uh, men as a person with mental health issues, uh, schizoaffective disorder, uh, I have noted that when during my five hospitalizations, that uh, most of the people that were most stable in their treatment were cigarette smokers, which is why. Thank you, Tiffany Edwards, followed by Matt Sayer. 
Good evening, Mayor and City Councilors. Tiffany Edwards, uh, soon to be Ward 5, and here representing the Eugene Chamber of Commerce. I'm here today in strong support of the ordinance for a smoke-free downtown. I'm going to share with you a few statistics to demonstrate the importance of the policy and why I think it makes sense for Eugene. The latest research estimates that somewhere between 11 and 14 percent of the population are smokers, 11 uh, percent in urban areas. So let's assume that even as high as 14 percent, uh, of those 14 percent of the population that do smoke, 9 out of 10 say that they would like to quit and feel non-smoking environments aid in their efforts to do so. So to put this in practical terms, for every 100 people in Eugene, presumably only 14 smoke, but all but 2.6 of them are trying to quit. So that's less than three for every 100 people in our community. Also, according to a recent Lane County Health and Human Services poll, 91% of the people in our area believe secondhand smoke is harmful, and a vast majority of those believe that protection from secondhand smoke is important. The laws that govern our communities and the way that we agree on the rules that we're all going to live by must make sense for the majority of the population, not just 3%. This policy makes sense for the overwhelming majority of the citizens of Eugene, those who don't smoke, those who don't wish to be exposed to secondhand smoke, and or those who are trying to quit. This policy protects people from smoke in public places, and having an opt-out policy in the downtown core provides an exception while at the same time helping to create a culture where those who work, visit, or spend time in downtown feel empowered to educate and enforce these policies that are working to change the culture to make downtown safe and welcoming for everyone. For the areas outside of downtown core, it's a step in the right direction. This policy aligns with so many of the other efforts being put forth by council, by the city, by stakeholders, and by so many of our others who are invested in the health and safety of our community and our, our downtown. It's a strong step in the right direction. Thanks for your consideration. Thank you. Matt Sayre, followed by Avi Naiman. Good evening, Mayor and City Council. I'm Matt Sayre, Vice President of the Technology Association of Oregon. I live in Springfield, and our membership includes more than 700 people who work in the downtown core uh, within the service district that is your ward, Emily. Uh, the Tech Association has been doing advocacy work for more than three years in Eugene, but it wasn't until today that we've written all of you together. We thought it was important that each of you had some key facts when making decisions to help Eugene become smoke-free. Fact one, peer-reviewed science shows that smoke-free ordinances have had no negative net effect on the hospitality industry. Uh, fact two, as Tiffany mentioned, the U.S. smoking population has reached an all-time low of 14%, and it's even lower in urban areas at 11%. This is down from roughly 42% in the 1960s. And, and the last fact, while smoking rates have decreased nationally, Cigarette butts remain the most littered item in the U.S. and account for a third of the litter in storm drains that end up in our rivers. Please remember, life got better when restaurants and airlines went smoke-free. It makes all the sense in the world to make Eugene's outdoor spaces, especially densely populated spaces like downtown, smoke-free. Thank you. Thank you. Avi Naiman, followed by Claire Barnum. Thank you, Avi Naiman. I'm a recent arrival to Eugene, residing now at 1055 High Street in Ward 3. Um, I want to applaud any and all efforts the council can make towards clearing the air. Having lived in both New York City and New Jersey, when they went through the struggles to enact uh, completely smoke-free indoor and outdoor public areas, I can say that there are now millions of those residents who breathe deep, clean sighs of relief every day that that fight is 15 years in the past. I think, though, for the current um, uh, ordinance, there are two things I'd like to suggest. The first is that the opt-in, opt-out choices are going to be confusing to the public. People aren't going to know whether they're in, whether they're out, whether the signage is for or against or needs to be one way or the other. The simple way to do it and send a strong health message is to simply make the whole city default to no smoking in public rights of way 
with the option to opt out, whether you're in the downtown <coughs> core or anywhere else. This is gonna support the public that they'll know they can always challenge a smoker no matter what part of the city that they're, they're in. Um, the second aspect that's needed is to have signage that not only tells you we have a clean city like was shown in last week's meeting, working session, but to show you where you're permitted to smoke in public rights of way and that the fact you're permitted to smoke there is because the property owner chose to permit it. Not the city, not residents, but the property owner. That helps let the people who are, who are passing by know who the responsible party is, voice their opposition to, to the property owners if so they choose, and also be able to challenge the smokers. Thank you. Thank you. Claire Barnum, followed by Frank Wilson. Mayor and Councillors, my name is Claire Barnum and I am the Executive Director of Downtown Eugene Incorporated. Um, we're a not-for-profit association of the property owners of downtown and by way of reference, our district runs from 6th to 11th and high to Charnelton. So the opt-out district largely encompasses that. Please consider moving forward on the smoke-free downtown ordinance. Downtown is a special place, the second most densely popula populated space in the city, and for that reason, it deserves special attention. A lot of public money has been spent on the revitalization of downtown, and we believe that the passage of this ordinance furthers the mission of making downtown a cleaner and more inviting space for anybody who wants to enjoy our town, our downtown. One of our greatest concerns is the impact that cigarettes butts have on the cleanliness of the city. Business and property owners have to bear the cleanup cost of cigarette butt litter surrounding their entries, sidewalks, and parking areas. The presence of litter in a community is shown to decrease property values. And downtown Eugene is one of the largest sources of tax revenue for the city as a whole. It's our job to protect that revenue, and eliminating cigarette butts is a small and easy improvement toward that effort. Our hope is to continue the hard work that the city has invested in making our downtown a vibrant community. And let's not forget that in 2021, Eugene will be host to the biggest sporting event in the world. How cool would it be to show off our city's commitment to clean surroundings? From the elimination of cigarette butts littering the city sidewalks to cleaner air, this is our opportunity opportunity to show that we as a community care deeply about the public health of those who work and live downtown as well as its visitors. Thank you. Thank you. Frank Wilson followed by Doug Atkinson. Good evening Mayor and City Councilors. My name is Frank Wilson and I'm here representing the Lane Transit District. LTD supports the proposal to allow the prohibition of smoking on public rights of way adjacent to opted in properties and or the prohibition of smoking within the downtown core. Allowing properties to opt out, we believe that this ordinance would promote the improvement of public health in general and elevate the ability of the community to provide a more environmentally welcome area to all. Thank you very much for your action on this matter. Thank you. Doug Atkinson. No? All right, uh, Robert Blake. And he will be followed by Chief Rodney Budley. Mayor and council people, thank you again for the opportunity to speak to you as I spoke to you last week as you were considering bringing the ordinance forward. And so I will shape my comments to not repeat the things that I've already said, but to suggest some additional things. I live at 1932 Woodson Loop, and I believe that's in Ward 2, although my uh, reading of the map may be a little off, but I think that's uh, actually where I live. I've been here for 14 months, and I moved from Houston, Texas. Houston went through a period about 10 years ago of going completely smoke-free in all uh, major areas and public areas, uh, and it was a three-year period. It was not simple, but a city of 7.5 million people were able to pull that off over a three-year period. And so one of the things that I would want you to consider based on some of the comments that I've heard tonight is that you consider expanding the reach of the ordinance itself. The downtown corridor uh, core and currently smoke-free facilities nearby 
Uh, I speak on behalf of Peace Health, so the University District Campus, we want this. We want you to do this. And I believe uh, the point that has been made about being able to challenge the notion of smoking on a public right-of-way uh, would be uh, confusing across the city if that's not considered. The second thing I want you to consider is that um, the opt-out period while uh, has been described by Councilman Evans as an elegant um, option or a compromise, would be for a period of time and allow people to consider how to move to smoke-free status altogether. And the third thing I would want uh, for you to consider is given the deep respect that I as a registered nurse would hold for anyone who has to deal with this issue is that uh, engage healthcare organizations across our city uh, to work with you to provide support services and wraparound services for people who want to quit. Thank you. Thank you. I have Chief Rodney Budley Swiftfoot Augusta Reitman. Thank you. Chief. And you'll be followed by Christopher Friend. I'm not pro or negative smoking or non-smoking, but it is a right. As a Native American, we were taught that Geronimo, one of our greatest generals, our chiefs, who, who led many millions to, not deaths, to prosper. We were taught by him that smoking was one of our inherent rights, brought to us by wonton, Wakanda. The grandfather spirit brought us the smoking pipe, brought us the smoke down, brought us the tobacco down. You violate the 1978 American Indians Freedoms of Religious Act in acting this ordinance. You violate that. That's another treaty you guys want to throw out. That's fine. But it is on the books. 1978 American Indians Religious Freedoms of Religious Act. You cannot mess with an American Indian when he's being spiritual. By God, you take my pipe from me. I'm going to get spiritual on you. Oh. Thank you. Christopher Friend, followed by Kimberly Gladen. Good evening, Mayor, uh, City Council members. For the record, my name is Christopher Friend. Um, I am a visitor to your city. I'm the Government Relations Director for the American Cancer Society Cancer Action Network. We are the advocacy affiliate of the, our better known partners at the American Cancer Society. Uh, we're based here locally um, at, on Oakmont Way, uh, which I believe is in Ward 4. Um, first, I would just like to say that uh, ACS CAN um, represents over 3,000 advocacy members across the state of Oregon and over 750 um, ACS CAN members reside in Lane County specifically. Um, first, I think it's most important to mention that tobacco is the number one cause of preventable death in our state and across the country. And as such, uh, it is incumbent upon local leaders, the American Cancer Society Cancer Action Network, uh, to enact evidence-based policies which drive down tobacco consumption. Um, this isn't just a policy I work on. This is something that's deeply important to me. Um, two years ago, I watched my grandfather pass away to tobacco-related death, and it is really a quite nasty end of life. Um, I would like to mention that uh, it is quite important that young people do not see tobacco consumption in public because it normalizes the behavior. While well, a previous speaker mentioned that uh, we have seen a decrease in tobacco consumption in recent decades, that's because of constant uh, evidence-based policies. Tobacco control is something that we have to fight every single day um, so that new generations uh, aren't picking up the habit. Um, I should also mention uh, tobacco is one of the only substances that is, if used as directly will almost certainly kill. I'd finally like to mention that Lane County um, has been a leader specifically on enacting Tobacco 21 and Tobacco Retail License. Lane County and Eugene um, residents like to regard themselves as leaders in health in Oregon, uh, and this would be one great way to do that. Thank you. Thank you. Kimberly Gladen, followed by June Simon. Kimberly Gladen, I live downtown. Um, I would like to encourage you, 
and I have at meetings before asked you to go ahead and go with the non-smoking. Um, there's no amount of secondhand smoke that isn't harmful to people around you. Um, we have a lot of kids downtown. We have a lot of other residents downtown. People come and go. Downtown's a special place. It's not like the rest of the city. Uh, there's a lot of cigarette butt litter. Um, there are frequently times, you know, people think you smoke outside, you're not bothering anyone. Well, there's a lot of people smoke around my building. And the smell of cigarette smoke coming in my apartment um, causes my asthma to react quite a bit. I've woken up in the middle of the night having trouble breathing, choking, because someone's smoking outside my windows and they think I can't smell it. I can usually tell when people are smoking out there because it comes in my apartment and I can smell it. I'm really tired of getting off the bus at the bus station and heading home or going to the library and having to walk through clouds and clouds of smoke. Um, I really feel for the health of our community, this is very important. What's more, I see so many people throw their cigarette butts down on the ground and not even bother to put it in a garbage can. Uh, these cigarette butts end up in our waterways. Um, the cigarette butt has a high concentration of nicotine. These congregate in the shallow areas of our rivers and streams. That's where bees get the water they cool their hives down from. And as we all know, studies have shown nicotine is very harmful to our bee population. And with all the emphasis um, on taking care of our bees in our community, I think that this is important also for air pollution. And um, we got kids suing the government over it, so we should take a little heed too in the personal problems we have with cigarette smoke. Thank you. Thank you. June Simon. June Simon, yes, followed by Rob Bennett. It's good that you cut the time down to two minutes because that's about as long as I can stand. <laughs> um, uh, hello to everyone. Thank you for being here. Thank you for listening. Um, I have spent a lot of years in academia, and i it's my nature to go to the library and research whatever is on my mind. And I've done a fair amount of research about smoking bans and secondhand smoke, but we have to clarify that what we're talking about is not secondhand smoke. We're talking about secondhand smoke in the outdoors. If you can find research that supports your smoking ban, I'd like to know about it. Because everything I looked at suggests that there is none. You didn't include any in your statement, your um, summary state statement introducing the ban, and for good reason, because it doesn't exist. Most of what we're hearing is people disliking smoking and smokers. And I have to say smokers, because I am one. And there's a lot of rude behavior that I experience smoking on the street. And what is an 80-year-old woman doing smoking in the street? I have no place else to smoke. I live downtown. I sleep downtown. I, all my extracurricular stuff is downtown. Nowhere else to go. Thank you. Thank you. Next is Rob Bennett. Followed by Jeffrey Keim. Hello, uh, Rob Bennett, Ward 5. Um, I'm here tonight to um, represent Newberry Child Care. We're a state certified preschool located on uh, Willamette Street between Broadway and 10th. We're certified to care for 32 children, ages two and a half to six. They, um, in addition to you know being dropped off, picked up, 
every day by their parents, walking on the sidewalks. We take walks to the library. We take walks to the farmer's market, uh, to the fountain. Uh, we take walks just to walk around downtown. And um, I, we're here to support um, the no smoking ordinance and uh, just have a voice for the children who can't be here themselves. Thank you. Thank you. Jeffrey Keim, followed by Jason Mo Buckley. Jeffrey Keim, Eugene. First of all, let me express my disappointment and disgust at the city council and city management. As elected officials, you serve at and for the will of the people. Management is to reflect this and use due legal process in the execution of their duties. You have done neither in the pursuit of the smoking ban. To my knowledge, no business owners or residents in the proposed exclusion zone were contacted as to their opinions regarding the ban, perhaps because it has been twice defeated due to enormous public outcry and opposition. To avoid having to endure the will of the people, the ban was sneakily inserted into the council agenda July 9th with public comments slated for July 16th and a vote scheduled for July 26th. The vote was scheduled before the ordinance had even been adopted by the council. A vote that apparently has already happened. Saturday's register guard article included the intended votes of each council member, some with reasons for doing so. You have forwarded and voted upon this with no public input. Tonight's comment portion of this meeting apparently happening just so you can go through the motions. Scheduling all this midsummer during fair week and so quickly only adds to the deviousness of the proceedings. It's called political railroading. Now your PR articles and own published opinions cite the opt out clause as a reason for voting yes. Curious, I scanned 102 pages of legalese and while I found mention of this clause, it is never defined only referred to as at the discretion of the city manager, intending to sign into law and ordinance based on an undefined clause. You are either voting blindly or have secret information about the opt-out you have chosen not to share with the public. This is not only unethical, but illegal. How do you sign into law something with no legal definition? Vote for something without knowing what it is. Similar things happened in Nazi Germany, who passed the first World War II smoking ban. Nazi officials moved aggressively without public input in an all-out campaign against smoking. Thank you. Jason Mo Buckley. Followed, Shame on you. Jason Mo Buckley, followed by Susan uh, Calderet, or think Caldwell. Got it. Thank you. Hello, uh, Jason Buckley. I live in the West Jefferson neighborhood, probably your, your, your side. Um, I'm pretty not cool with this. Um, I work downtown, been working in a bar downtown for the last 12 years. Uh, <laughs> I, I, the opt out thing, I mean, I understand it, but how far are you gonna go like five years from now or two years from now you're going, well, now we're gonna make it instead of 10 feet from the door, 25 feet from the door, 30 feet from the door. Next thing, I don't have a smoking patio. Next thing, we don't have business because most of our clientele are smokers. Uh, next thing, I don't have a job. Next thing, I'm homeless on the street getting arrested for smoking a cigarette or getting fined for smoking a cigarette. I, don't, I disagree with this. I think you, you need to take a look at this a, a different way, a different approach. Uh, I understand people are against smoking, but don't don't treat us like like we're second class citizens because people are addicted to something. It does not make it is not right. It is not fair to anybody. Thank you. Thank you, Susan Caldwell, followed by Christy Inskip. Actually, um, I'm Susan Caldwell, and I live uh, in Skinner Butte uh, on Second Avenue. Um, I came to stand for somebody who was the first speaker, um, Pamela Krause, because she was so upset about going through smoke every time she got on the bus. And I understand that, that's very hard. So I would ask, please, put a, have a total smoking ban in public places. Thank you. Thank you. And our final speaker, uh, Christy Inskip. Mayor Venice and city councilors, 
Thank you. My name is Christy Inskip, and I'm a senior community health analyst at Lane County Public Health at 151 7th Avenue. Lane County, along with over 40 other local uh, agencies and businesses, have passed tobacco-free property policies. The U.S. Community Prevention Services Task Force recommends smoke-free policies on the basis of strong evidence of effectiveness in reducing exposure to secondhand smoke, reducing the prevalence of tobacco use, increasing the number of tobacco users who quit, reducing the initiation of tobacco use among young people, reducing tobacco-related morbidity and mortality. The U.S. Surgeon General has determined there is no risk-free level of exposure to secondhand smoke. Non-smokers are exposed to the same carcinogens as active smokers. Research shows during periods of active smoking, outdoor tobacco smoke levels in outdoor cafes and restaurants and bar patios near people smoking rival indoor tobacco smoke concentrations. In Lane County, one in two people were exposed to secondhand smoke or vapor from other customers at outdoor seating areas of businesses. Implementing 100% Smoke-free environments is the only effective way to protect the population from the harmful effects of exposure to secondhand smoke. Tobacco-free policies with no designated areas are substantially more effective at reducing smoking, exposure to secondhand smoke, smoking-related diseases and butt litter than are partial tobacco-free policies. There's a high level of support for smoke and vape-free policies. There is an association between the frequency that youth observe smoking and the perception that smoking, smoking is socially acceptable. Most people begin uh, smoking before their age 18. Nearly nine out of 10 people have tried to quit. And places that allow smoking create environmental cues that trigger strong cravings and urges to smoke and act as barriers in quitting. Populations targeted by the tobacco industry, people of color, people with low incomes, people with mental health disorders, and others suffer disproportionately from the tobacco-related diseases and deaths. Um, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And you, that was a final speaker. Um, that closes the public hearing. Are there any comments from city councilors? Councilor Syret, Councilor Taylor, okay, hold on. Councilor Taylor and Councilor Semple. Take it away. Uh, city Manager, can you clarify, did this council already take a vote on this ordinance? Uh, no, they have not. Thank you. So we took a vote to refer it to this public hearing tonight. That's correct. Okay. And could you explain what the term city manager discretion means in, in the context of the opt-out provision that's being uh, considered? Yeah, so what uh, uh, that would mean is if you choose to have an opt-out provision, then a property owner can apply for to <laughs> opt out from the ordinance uh, itself, and then uh, I would grant that to the, uh, the property owner so the, the area adjacent to their property would not be smoke-free. Thank you. Uh, Councilor Taylor. Thank you. Um, anyone who remembers when you could smoke on airplanes know that you don't confine smoke to one area. If When you say you could opt out and the you couldn't confine it to the area that opted out. But I, th I think there's a lot to think about. I agree with the person who said this was devious the way it was brought back to us. We, de we defeated this and suddenly we're talking about it again without a lot of public information out. Um, I was totally in favor of the ban for indoor smoking when we did that. Um, I think that we should also have banned the smoking decks when they're adjacent to residential areas. The smoke from the outdoor play, place, I know of places where they're smoking outdoors behind a bar, but their, res, their homes right nearby, they can smell the smoke and it's we're in their backyards. Uh, the person who said she can smell the smoke downtown coming into her house. If we ban it downtown and people go to nearby residential areas to smoke, which would happen, then those people will be smelling it in their homes. I, I, it's very complicated. And another thing, the person who said she's a smoker and has no place to smoke except outside, I don't think we can take care of that situation. It's it is, I, no, I don't think smoking is good. I had a beloved aunt who died from it and friends who've died from emphysema, but that doesn't mean that 
we can take care of all that. It's, it's people who are addicted are going to smoke somewhere. And I just think this is, we, if we want to ban it everywhere, then that takes care of it maybe, except for the people who don't have homes. It's, it's very complicated. I, I will not, probably not be voting for this. Thank you. Okay, Councilor Semple. Thank you. I have a lot to say about this. Um, it's the last hearing of the night. It's late. It's a hot day. It is the Monday after fair. And is it your turn or my turn? We have one more hearing. There's another hearing. Excuse me, when? Go for it. We have one more. We do have one more hearing. We carry on. I thought we were voting on it next week. No, public hearing. We have one more public hearing tonight on the agenda. Oh, okay. Yes. Yes. Sorry. Sorry. Take it all back. I forgot whatever the last one was. I thought we were voting on the next one. Okay. Didn't have much time. Now I've got less time. People didn't know about this. I don't know. The council asked for it to come back. We voted it down last time. Here it is, you know, three, four weeks left in a, before break. We're going to push it through. I don't know how many people know about it. I applaud uh, Jeffrey and Jason for, for getting down here because they do make their living selling cigarettes. Um, if we're going to do a ban, let's do it citywide. Why is everything about downtown? You know, cars make a lot of pollution that's dangerous, and there's more downtown, so let's get rid of them, yeah. please. If we're going to have a ban citywide, you, each person, decide you want smoking in your building, you want smoking outside your building. Let the people who want it opt in. The people who've already built their lives on the way it is now shouldn't have the burden to protect what they're doing. I agree, cigarettes stink. My grandfather died of emphysema. It's not a joke. But is it our job to monitor everybody's health? Let people opt in. Let everybody chip in 20 bucks and let's put a blue stripe in front of their property and we'll all know, don't smoke there. Let the people who want the change make the change. Um, secondhand smoke's dangerous everywhere. Let's treat everybody the same. Let's protect them the same. I think we should, should have it the way it is. Opt in if you want it. If we can't go for that, then make it citywide and opt out if you want it. Uh, somebody wrote me today, and this almost changes my mind, uh, the dogs downtown are, sm are smelling that secondhand smoke, and, and this is also a concern of mine. Um, the cigarette butts, they're gross. Uh, Kimberly's right, it's Saturday and Sunday morning, there's cigarette butts everywhere. Guess what? Get some ashtrays. There's nowhere to put the cigarette butts. Where are we supposed to put them? There's no place to sleep. Where are you supposed to go? Let's provide ashtrays. Let's provide places to sleep. Let's be humane in our desire to keep everybody healthy. Let's stop discriminating. It's true. If you're homeless and we ban cigarette smoking outside, you can't smoke legally. You already can't sleep legally. This is complicated. And I think we're going about it too fast. Thanks. Please, we do have quiet. You can show your approval this way. Uh, Councilor Clark. <clears throat> Thank you, Mayor. I, Manager, I apologize, but I didn't get a chance to read all the detail of this yet. What's the enforcement mechanism on this? It's a... It's a... Fine. I, I can't hear you. I'm sorry. Sorry, I got too much space. Um, I do not. I, we can get you that code, the specific code section, but it's in no, chapter the mechanism, six. not necessarily the language. Will police officers be citing people? I don't know the answer to that. If the, I mean, I don't know what their actions will be. It is a citable offense. It's in the prohibited smoking chapter six section. So it would be enforceable the same way if somebody lit up a cigarette in the middle of a restaurant. It is just another provision within that. It's not, it's not separately enforceable in any different way than our current smoking prohibitions are. 
Are either of you aware of any police officer ever citing someone for lighting up indoors? I'm not. Mm. But I, I do have that correct, that that's going to be the enforcement mechanism of this, is that it will be a citation from a police officer. Is that correct? All right. Thank you. Any other comments or questions on this? Okay, I think that closes that item. Oh, one more. You have one more. So uh, when we vote on this next time, it says we can vote on it the way it's written or we can make amendments and we don't have to have another public hearing about that. Um, so we can kind of decide next week. If you were, did you want me to if you were to make an amendment to, let's say, not adopt all of it, um, you, you would not need to have another public hearing regarding that. If, if you wanted to make it broader or encompass more things, for example, you had said if we wanted to make it citywide, um, you would need to have another public hearing on that. Now we'll put it off to fall. If you wanted to uh, have an opt-out provision citywide, I think that's what you need another public hearing. If you chose an opt-in citywide, I believe the current uh, ordinance would accommodate that and the current public hearing would accommodate that. That's correct. Yeah. Thanks. Okay. All right. Thank you. I think that wraps up that item on the agenda. And we are now ready for our seventh public hearing tonight. Eight. How could I forget this one? It's oh, about pie. <laughs> oh, good Lord. All right. Good Lord. Manager, just, I'll let you introduce Thank you, this. Mayor. Uh, the public hearing, this public hearing provides an opportunity for the public to comment on the draft Parks and Recreation System Plan, picture play uh, plan, a vision and implementation plan for Eugene's Parks and Recreation Systems. The result, the plan is a result of three years of planning work and an award-winning community engagement effort that connected with over 12,000 community members. It includes a 30-year vision for parks and recreation to benefit current and future generations and a 10-year implementation plan that identifies priorities and funding strategies. Council will consider adopting the plan by resolution immediately following the hearing. Thank you. Picture plan uh, a pie. Those requesting to speak during the, oh, let me open this. Let me open this public hearing. Those wishing to speak during the public hearing must submit a completed request to speak form to the information desk prior to the beginning of the public hearing. When you come to the podium, please give your name, city of residence, and for Eugene residents, your ward if known. You will have two minutes to comment. There are lights on the time where the red light indicates the end of the two minutes. And we have three speakers. The first one is Marjorie Smith, followed by Dana Terrell. Troopers, here all night. Really? Hi. I really appreciate what you're doing. I don't think I could do it. <laughs> um, my name is Marjorie Smith. I live at 984 Lincoln downtown, and I absolutely love it. And for the first time in a long time, I walked all the way over here, and th there was no smoke, which is, uh, I have a real problem. I have a rejection problem when I smell smoke. So I try to control it, but someday somebody's going to get it. <laughs> but I'm not here about that. I, my husband is Edwin R. Smith, and he was director of parks. He worked for the parks for 30 years, and he was director of parks for 28 years of the, those. And I've been a, I was on the Future Park Planning Committee, and I am extremely proud of how the information was put together, how the public was contacted in in getting all the information together. It was a, a very interesting thing to be a part of. And to have that and the development of the riverfront working together so that we can actually have public access to the, inter, to the riverfront and hopefully even more space for public gathering than is on the plan so far. I think a wonderful job is being done. So I just want to say I'm all for it. Go for it. Thank you. Next speaker is Dana Terrell, followed by Hope uh, McRover. 
Hi, Dana Terrell, 3365 Lake Glen, here to, at the end, to hold up my Clark's District here at Ward. Uh, I just want to hang out, I hung out here because I think this process to come up with this plan has been so great. I mean, this three-year process, it hasn't just been a sit around and, and see what people might think. It's been an active way of getting out into the community, taking that little red bus out and getting 12,000 people to come and comment and tell the city staff what it is that Eugenians wanted from our parks and recreation. And clearly people were invested and engaged and they told what they want and how important it was. And I think they've done a thorough and thoughtful plan to put before you and I hope that you support it. Thank you. Thank you. And our final speaker, Hope McGrover. Hope, you still here? No, okay, then that. Closes that uh, public hearing. Are there any comments or questions for council? Oh, I do. Uh, Councilor Semple. Thank you. Uh, I love the plan, but well, if we're going to vote on it, what are the slight modifications? Because I can't vote on it if I don't know what they are. Um, Carolyn Burke, Parks and Open Space Division. At our work session on July 11th, I mentioned that um, we had uh, considered um, a name change request that had come in, and we had made reference to that in the plan. Um, but however, after we um, looked again at the naming policy, got some advice from city attorney, we decided we should separate those two. So we moved reference to the proposed name change from the plan. And that's it? That's it. Okay, thanks. Okay, we ready for a motion? Oh, did I miss anyone? Anyone need to comment? Okay, go ahead. I want to make sure that I have this right here. We're on item number eight. We're on no, item no, number no, seven. No, right there, right there. I see it. I'm sorry. I couldn't see where that was. <laughs> I move to adopt the resolution presented in attachment A, adopting picture plan, play, a vision and implementation plan for Eugene's parks and recreation systems. Second. Uh, Councilor Zelenka? Just for the record, I wanted to note that the pie at dinner did not unduly pie. influence my decision to vote in favor of this plan. <laughs> Parks play pie. <laughs> Any other comments, questions? All right, all in favor? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and that passes. Congratulations, thank you for the pie. Thank you for waiting all night for that final verdict. And uh, that closes that. And um, then we are ready for our final action, wildlife feeding. Council is scheduled to take action on proposed changes to the city's nuisance code. The proposed code prohibits the feeding of wildlife, including deer, raccoon, wild turkey, bear, cougar, coyote, and wolf, and provides examples of conditions that attract rodents. The proposed code changes are intended to address the growing concerns around an increase in rodents and the growing turkey population. Okay, motion. Just hit the wrong button. So, I grab this. Thank you. I move to adopt Council Bill 5189 that updates the city's nuisance code. Second. Discussion, comment? Councilor Semple. Thank you. I'm not going to vote for this. I don't think it's the right way to go about it. I think we should use education and cooperation. I think we should tell people what's going on and why it matters and how they can help. I think the city should get a shipping container of the wooden spring rat traps. That's a lot of them. I think we should distribute them citywide in 50-gallon drums at every single grocery store, community centers, the library, schools, parks, where people work out, home improvement stores, and anywhere else we can think of. This is a crisis. We need to work on it together. This is a cheap, easy way we could do it. Let's work together. Yes, the city should be trapping too. Every public place, we're gonna have a lot of traps. If we use them up, let's get some more. Let's put out black plastic bags with them. If we need to, we can have special corpse pickups at certain spots. Uh, I really think it's important that we work, work together on this. I think it's important that we educate first. We can tell people why. We don't want you to feed the turkeys and the deer. 
Let's get rid of the poison. A lot of people are complaining about that. It's scary stuff. I don't want a kid to eat it. You know, it could happen. Uh, there's birth control for rats. There's actually a company in this country that sells birth control for rats, and other cities are using it. I think that would be a very Eugene thing to do. Free love for rats. <laughs> Uh, along with the shipping container of rat traps, I want a shipping container, container of those Darth Vader uh, compost bins. Let's get them wholesale, sell them at cost to anybody who wants them. We want to make a change. Let's help people make the change. If we don't want them to sleep downtown, let's give them somewhere else to sleep. If we won't, don't want to have rats, let's help people get rid of the rats. If it comes down to the chickens, which I hope we don't have to go there, I hope education will work, but maybe we need to have a chicken permit. Yearly fee, up to six chickens, got to have your coop inspected. The fee pays for the inspectors. There are different ways to think about things. I don't like using the stick first. I like education first. I like giving the people the opportunity to work together. This is a really good chance to model how we can make the changes that we want in our city. I'm not going to vote for this. We can always bring it up again later. We're good at that. Councillor Clark. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, <clears throat> if I could, Manager, would you walk me through this a little bit? So there, I've probably had uh, three or four emails in the last two weeks from uh, constituents in the Cal Young area who have rat infestations attacking their, their vegetable gardens that are coming over from neighbors who have chickens and have other uh, associated animals and issues. So let's say those folks call and complain now. The, so there's a complaint-based system and someone's going to say you're, uh, if they're, for example, at a chicken coop there, you're inadvertently feeding the rats. Do I have that right? Is that how it would be referred to? You are passively feeding the rats? Would they be fined in such a case? Uh, well, we don't go to fines, but we're going to educate. Um, so, yeah, we're going to look around to the neighboring properties and see if there is a contributing factor. Um, but you're not going to stop them by force in some fashion from doing it? If they are doing something that is in violation or that is contributing to the rat population, then yes, we will. Is that? It? But you just said it's not by fines, or it is. Well, we don't go to fines, um, so we're going to work with them through education. That's not where we. That's our not our starting point. We're right. Gonna, we're going to educate. We're going to, if we have to, we'll go to a notice to correct. Give them some time to address the issues. If they're just not willing to correct, right. them, Yeah, we go to fines. Okay, that's what I was looking for. Um, okay. Thank you. Hey, Councillor Taylor. Uh, thank you. Um, I'm going to vote against this after I many times asked for an ordinance against feeding turkeys. But um, I've decided it's better to educate people about the turkeys and do something about the rats. Rats are really a, a serious health problem. And in my opinion, the city should be trapping them. And um, as for the turkeys, I think we would be encouraging neighbors to complain about neighbors, and there's already enough of that. So I, I, I think we can, instead of making a law against feeding turkeys, we can try to educate people that it's they are destructive to vegetation, to neighbors' vegetation, and we can use education for that. But for the rats, we need to do something. Thank you. Okay, any other? Oh, Councilor Pryor. Yeah, everything that was said about education, absolutely. We need to do that. I agree. But that's not enough. Um, and particularly with regard to the turkeys, I heard from the Fish and Wildlife that unless we had an ordinance in place, they would not begin trapping and removing turkeys. We are overrun with turkeys. And we can educate, don't feed the turkeys, but there's still turkeys and Polting season just finished, and I have now seen mother turkeys with several chicks running around. So the problem is not going to go away just through education. 
And I know it sounds kind of mean to say we need to start trapping turkeys. We need to start trapping turkeys. We have large numbers of turkeys which are not indigenous to this area and are growing out of control. So yes, with the education, I absolutely agree, but we also need to start removing some of the turkey population and we cannot do that without this ordinance. Mayor, I'd like to call the question. Second. Okay, so wait, what, what does that mean? We can't talk anymore? Not debatable. Yeah. yeah. So it's not debatable. This. It's not multiple not debatable. times. It's after 10 o'clock. It's not debatable. Just, well, I have okay. one more thing to say and Greg didn't have a turn. She called and the question. Don't call the it. question. And seconds. don't vote for it. And it was seconded. So that's it. So we're done. Talking about it? Actually, no, you vote on whether or not. You didn't vote call on whether to call. Calling we voted on calling, call calling on the Claire, question. But okay. Anyway. Okay. All right. So we'll vote on calling the question. All in favor of calling the question? One, two, three, four. Opposed to calling the question? One, two, three, four. The other person. I need one more. It, she didn't. That wasn't right. So. Wait. So what? Everyone hasn't voted. Have you voted? I voted no. Oh, you. You voted no so for it's four and four. So it's four and four. Okay. So I vote for no for calling the question. Let's just let everyone speak. Greg was okay. So, Greg, Councilor Evans. You know, I I absolutely agree with Chris on this. Um, you know, we are we are overrun with turkeys. Uh, we have been that way for a long time, but I will note something in, in my comment here is that Oregon Fish and Wildlife brought those turkeys here <laughs> and they have to ask us to, you know, enact an ordinance in order for to get them to trap and remove turkeys. I find that totally counterintuitive, but um, if that's what we need to do, then let's do it. Okay, any other comments? Councilor Sepple, one in a second round. Okay. Wildlife management, there's a carrying capacity for every population, including the turkeys. We can take the turkeys away. Turkeys breed just as fast as rabbits. We're going to have more turkeys. I, I just don't think that this is the right way to do it, and I don't think that it will help the turkeys or us. Thanks. Okay, ready for a vote? All in favor of Council Bill 5189. One, two, three, four, five, six. Opposed to it passes. Someone put the motion on the table. Yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah, it's on the table. Seconded. Yeah. Okay. It, pa it passes. We're good. Thank you all very much. What was the final vote?